What's up, everyone? Welcome to Off Beat Podcast, man. Yes, man. We are so Ooh. excited to be with you guys, man. Yeah. It's an honor to be with you guys, and uh, thank you guys for watching. So right now, today's episode, our kickoff episode. All right, this is like the pre. This is like season. Yeah, we're like first episode. Yeah, first episode. We're in. We're up and live. Yup. And uh, but today, man, it's gonna be. We're doing it. A little bit different because today what I'm going to be doing is introducing my story. And I'm excited because my co-hosts are going to be taking over and they are going to be interviewing me. So why don't they introduce themselves? What's up, guys? I'm Brian Padilla. And I'm Aaron Ortega. And today, like George said, we are going to interview George. And he took the time to think about this and talk with us and was like, hey, I want to open up my story. I want to share it and I want to just be vulnerable. So I was like, let's test that. (laughs) Get get to know (laughs) the real real I'm excited, right? (laughs) So George, (laughs) let's get this thing started, shall we? Let's go. Let's go. go. All right. So tell us, where were you born and raised at, homie? So I was born uh, not too far from here. I was born in Pomona. Pomona shout Valley Pomona. Hospital. P-Valley. Yeah. Shout out to P Town. And um, but at the around the rage, like I want to say around two or three years old, oh. my family moved to Vegas. Oh. Vegas. Vegas, Vegas. Vegas. What? Yeah. Yeah. And so we moved out there and uh I was pretty much I pretty much lived in Vegas from that age, the age of two or three. Mm. Till about eighteen years old, man. What? Okay, so yeah. man, Vegas. I didn't. Yeah. I did not know that about you. That's crazy. What was it like growing up in your childhood in Vegas? Like, what was school like? What was community? What all that like upbringing? Yeah. So growing up, you know, we, you know, my 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 family, my both my parents. You know, I mean, they were um, you know immigrants from from Mexico, and um, you know they came out here pursuing the American dream. You know, but just like any family, you know, in the beginning was a struggle. Right. You know, so when we moved to Vegas, we moved to the projects. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So we were living in the projects uh, and um, growing up in the projects, man, right there in the government housing in Vegas, it was off of uh, uh, 28th Street. Okay. Wow. 28th Street. Anyone that's uh, that grew up in Vegas or knows Vegas uh, back in the late 80s, 90s knows that, you know, that area, 28th Street, Elmwood, you know, All like right. that was... That was Crazy. good. That, that was, was good. good. Okay. Was it was it Hispanic? More Hispanic? It was movie? both, man. It was like during that time there was we had a lot of you had a lot of uh, African American and right. a lot of Hispanic Latino. A lot now, of what was your favorite memory growing up in that area as a child? You know what? Like growing up in that area in my childhood, man. Like I, I can honestly say that one thing that I, I do remember, man, is is you know what? We had a lot of fun as kids. Yeah, right. you know we. What was uh, the vibe? What did you guys do? You know, it, we had a lot of independence. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let's just say that, man. We had a a lot of independence, you know, because at that time, you know, my both my parents were working. You know, like again, right. they were they were they were they weren't trying to stay there. You know, they were trying to make it get out. You know, but they had crazy work schedules. So wow. you know, at the same time, it gave us that freedom. And so we would, man. I remember we would, man. We would come home from school. And we would just play, you know, right. and we were able to get to know a lot of people in the area. Was that um, hot? Oh, you know what? Growing up there, man, like you don't even think about it. Wow. Now that I go back, I'm like, hey, bro, like holy how God. the heck did I live here, man? Seriously, yeah. man. But, I mean, my I have like a tolerance <laughs> when it comes to like heat. Right. Yeah. I think my tolerance level is like ninety. 193 degrees. Perfect. That's perfect weather. That, I can, I can, yeah. and I'm like, okay, 94, I want to go back inside. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah. I'm done, you know? I can take the heat. You know, I, <laughs> yeah. was, uh, I was born in Indio, so. Oh, you get, you get that. Oh, Indio, you get yeah. that. Uh, that's One, like Vegas right. status, I think. Yeah, 120, it's pretty much. Yeah. Dry weather, 120, like, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's how, that's how Vegas was. Right. Really? Yeah. And so, do you guys play outside or like, yeah, what, so, are you guys inside? Or what, what was yeah, it? Yeah, no, we would, we would play outside. We would play outside, and then, you know, right there in the projects, um, like in the middle, there, there was always they had a a, a basketball court, uh, and um, they had little things where you know 
like the kids from the neighborhood can play, and that's usually where we would spend All our right. time, you know. And we would, did you guys have like any? Do you have any siblings or anything? Yeah, so it was growing up. It was me and my brother, uh, okay. me and my older brother. Shout out to my brother if he ever watches this, Juan. I love Juan. you. All right, let's go, Juan. <laughs> so my big bro, man. So it was us. It was us. Um, us two growing up, and my mom and dad. All right, right, that's cool. So yeah. you guys would you guys would hang out then? You and your brother go out. Yeah, yeah. Growing close up, like we were real, real, real close together, right. man. We were like, because we were only three years apart. Okay. You know, so pretty much his friends were my friends. My friends were his friends growing up, and uh, yeah, we would just we would play all day, man. We would be in the basketball court. Um, there was a boys and girls club. I used to love going to the boys oh, okay. and girls. Okay, cool. That's nice. I used to love that, man. And that was kind of our getaway, man, because nice. that was kind of the only place that my parents would say, like, to the basketball court where we could see you guys or to the boys and girls club. You know, once we got of age where we could go to the boys and girls club alone, you know, um, you know, back then it was like 50 cents for a yearly pass. Oh, no way. Oh. That's crazy. Yeah. 50 cents. 50 cents, man. And so, and that's where me and my brother, man, we would spend so much time. Because, that's and that's cool. where we learned how to play sports. That's awesome. Right. Yeah, that's where baseball, football, basketball, uh, even golf. No way. Yeah, I remember that's they, cool. they- I love golf. golf? Let's go. Yeah. yeah. They now, even, they okay, even, so yeah. then you go from Boys and Girls Club, now going into your adolescence, what was it like being like in Vegas, and what was your community like? Was there? A, did you have like a belief? Did you? What was? What was your whole growing up in that time? Yeah, so growing up in that time, man, like really, you know, like I, I mentioned, you know, it was everyone who knows that area knows it was hood. You right. know, it, it was straight hood right there, man. And um, there was a lot of gang activity, gang violence, and honestly, growing up, man, that's that was appealing to us. Okay. You know, like sadly, but it was, you know, just like it it was to a lot of people, right. you know, and it was very appealing, you know, because we would, you know, we would see the bigger, you know, we call them the bigger homies, you know, we saw, we would see the big homies there and, you know, they would be in their, in their low riders. Cause that was like, like I said, it was early nineties, you know, right. so that was the, that was the culture, you know. That was like when boys in the hood came right. out. Yeah, right? boys in the hood, yeah, blood in blood society, out. American me. American oh, me, yeah. yeah. And so with that being appealing, was it all about being a part of something like a group of people that were tough or what was that? What, is, what was appealing about it? Yeah, you know, and that's a good question, man, because I, as I, I, I thought about that a lot, you know, and even right. even to this day, sometimes I think about it because there's a lot of things that still kind of, they kind of cling to you, you know, right. and you're like, man, but I think it was just being a part of something, you know, being part of something and being looked at as, yo, that's that's the man. Really? Right. You know, like, because that's what you would see. Like, you you would, you know, you had your parents, you know, and and, and growing up, like, you know, um, you know, they were, they were, they were there. They were, you know, uh, they were great parents. You know I mean? They did what they, the, the best they could. But as soon as you would step out of the house and you would see, you know, see these guys, you know what I mean? Chilling in the hood. You would see them with a lot of people around them. You would see the influence they had. You would see, right. like, man, like the way they carry the themselves, the respect. If I can you know cut you mean? off, George. Yeah. Um, did you have a close relationship with your dad as far as like a connection where he sat with you, talked to you? Did you feel like comfort with your dad? Mm. Yeah. Well, the thing is, man, like, yeah, man. And, and, and I think that was, and I'm not, again, I'm not trying to say that my parents were bad. You know, right. they, they did what they could, but, but honestly, that was never there. Mm. You know, that, that, that was always missing, right? You know, that was, um, you know, and, and growing up, man, like, you know, I, 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 of course, you know, I always looked up to my dad, you know, cause my dad was a, he was, a, he was a cool dude. My right, dad, right. you know, he was, you know, um, he, he always had a lot of people around him too, like in his, his circle of influence, he, he didn't gangbang or anything. Like he was right. just, you know, my dad is straight paisa, you know, <laughs> straight <laughs> Michoacano, you know, like he was, you know, but I used to love the way my dad carried himself and right. I, and I looked up to my dad. You so, know? You're, so from what I'm understanding is that you grew up in the projects and there was a lot of gain activity yeah. and you were more attracted to that. Yeah. And, and I that's think because it, the respect that comes with respect, being yeah. a part of a, a group of people that see your value, but like most games, you have to prove yourself, right? Right, right. And you have to make a name for yourself. Right. And so that's where, like, you get a nickname. That's where they start noticing. That's what you're known for. Yeah. And it kind of, like, starts putting your identity, right? Yeah. Right. So t 
Did you ever go through any of that? So, so that's kind of that happened a little bit later. Okay, that happened a little bit later. So while in that, while we lived there, though, you know, I mean, that was always we would always hang around them, you know, and they were always like, "Yo, man, like, when are you gonna get jumped in? You know, when are you gonna get jumped in? Like, yeah. let's jump you in right now." And a few times, man, they would just like we would be hanging out, and then like some of the older kids, like, yeah, they were like two, three years right. older. You know, they would, uh, uh, you know, they would just like randomly like, yo, let's get, let's, let's jump this fool in. You know what I mean? And we'd be like, whoa, whoa. And then, mm. you know, and they would just bomb rush us, you know, and they would just like start, you know, they would just start beating us up. You know what I mean? But <laughs> getting you ready. They're getting you ready. Man. Yeah. But they would never like, like officially initiate us, you right. know? And, um, but you know, we always felt like, yo, they want us. You know what okay, I mean? Like, yo, right. we're up and coming, you know? And, and, and yeah. And most of the, I can honestly say that the majority of of our circle growing up, you know, they were all being eyed, you know, like, Hey, they're, they're the up and coming, you know, we we were the up and coming, you know, and, uh, most of them, you know, had family members that were gang banging already, you right. know, they, um, had uncles or their dads or their parents were already gang banging, you know? So for us though, we were first generation, you know? So, mm. um, it was just kind of like, man, like, it, there was always that thing in the back of the head, like, is this really what I want to do? Right. Well, I guess the, I, I guess I will, when it comes to like that type of age, I'm assuming like what, 13, 14? No. So what happened? No, that didn't. It, so what happened is that, see, that's why my life story is, is, it's, it's pretty crazy because see what happened is that we grew up in that, in that, we grew up in that environment. Right. And then at, at the age of like around 10 or 11, um, yeah, I was like 10 years old. My parents finally, finally, you know, they were, I remember they were so happy because they were finally able to purchase their first house. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Man. Yeah. They That's had, great. you know, they, they, they had worked hard, they were saving and then they finally got, you know, uh, they, you know, they got a taste of the American dream, right. you know, and they were able to purchase their first house and, um, and they were able to purchase in an area where at that time, even at that time, that area was decent. It was very nice. It was nice. It was more, you know. So it was pretty far from the projects, right? It wasn't that far, but it was it, it was, was in a enough. much better area. Right. Okay. It was in a much better area, you know. And um, so when we moved to this area, you know, it was, it, it honestly, it really was kind of like a culture shock. Right. Okay. You know, it really was because, you know, we still had the way we dressed, the way we carried ourselves was still hood, yeah. right. you know, and, and not that we were like ghetto or anything, you know what I mean? Like, you know, cause that was one thing that my, our parents always, you know, they always try to teach us that, you know, carry yourself with respect, you know, keep yourself, you know, clean, <laughs> you yeah, know, uh, right. you know, like, you know, they would always teach us that. So we, that, would you say that would be like the, well, the greatest value you learned from your parents? Is oh yeah, man. Yeah. They were Greatest value I've learned from them, man, was like hard work. Right. Hard work. You know, okay. hard work, um, dignity. Dignity. You know, dignity, yeah. like, you know, because even though I always tell people this story, man, I was like, man, you know what? We had, I can honestly say we had the cleanest apartment in the projects. Really? We, Rob, my yeah. mom and dad, well, mostly my mom, <laughs> yeah. but my mom was huge, 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 huge on keeping our apartment clean, you know, and she always taught us that value that it doesn't matter where you live, you know, right. but how you live. Mm -hmm. And, um, you like know, that. we always, you know, that's one thing that I carry to this day, you know, that anything I do, even if it's not mine, okay, you know, I take care of it. You right. know, I, I try to put value into it. Right. I try to take care of it and, um, and hard work, man, you know, that, you know, they, they, they taught me that man, that, you know, if you, you know, if you work hard, you know, you are able to to achieve, you know, your dreams. That's cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. But I, I have a question now. Okay, so you have, so this 10-year-old, you get at the new house, right? Yeah. And you're, you're getting exposed to gangs. How, now that you moved away from the projects, it's almost sound, it kind of sounds like you didn't get away from the projects and your attraction. How did you end up? going in that direction and were you in gang activity? No. So we were, I mean, cause we we're 10, I was 10 years old. My brother was 13, oh, yeah. you know? So, and by that time, you know, a lot of our friends, they still stayed in that area. But when we moved, you know, we did kind of start to shift, you know, and what ended up happening is that I started to meet new people. I started to meet 
to make new friends in, in school or in elementary school. Yeah, oh, okay. You know, and a lot of these fr- new friends, they were they were they weren't gang related. You know, they right. they lived in a nice area, you know, down the street from us. You know, so little by little, you know, like I started to kind of kind of kind of you know shy away, you know, from you know from that life, that mm-hmm. life that I thought I wanted before. You know, I was like, okay, you know what, like they're they're. You know, I, I can make other friends. I can have other friends, you know, but but what's crazy is that you still kind of have this insecurity in the back of your mind. Mm. You know, you, you insecurity always... Insecurity of what, though? That insecurity of, like, knowing where you grew up. Okay. You know, like, kind of feeling like you're less than. Right, right. You know, and it's crazy because, like, years later, years later, years, it wasn't even during that time, years, years later, I read an article that about... And this was an article from Vegas, actually. That was what's what. That's what was crazy. And the article was basically saying that you know how there was a big culture shock mm. in a lot of children that were growing up in projects. And then because what happened in Vegas is that they really adjusted the housing situations, and so a lot of the new housing they were making, like they were they were moving from project houses, project right. apartments. I'm sorry, and they were moving to like you know project housing. And so they were building these houses in nice areas. But what was happening is that these kids were coming from from the projects right. and they were going into these nice areas. So now they were going to nicer schools. Mm, and then as they yeah. were going to nicer schools, they started to meet new friends. Right. And then as they met new friends, they started to realize that a lot of these new friends, they didn't know the background they came from. Mm. And so what it hap- what a lo- what the study was showing is that a lot of kids were showing a lot of signs of insecurity. Oh wow. Right. And I was like, "Whoa, when I saw that article, I was like, yo, that was me." Man, that's so it crazy was like, because yeah, yeah. like that's that's so crazy when yeah, you yeah. think about a kid who actually thinks that their whole identity is from the projects and it's like low income and then yeah. like they can't bant them and they can't like when they compare it. Yeah, like, that's 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 really like whoa. That's pretty deep. Yeah, and know? it's true, man. Like you grew up like that. Even it, and it's normal, right? You grew up in a in a place where that's all you know. Yeah. And then right right away they, they send you to a nicer place, nicer area. Yeah. They're gonna act different, right? And then you're gonna notice it. Even the way you talk, the way you yeah. act. You know, like you're gonna notice it right away. Yeah. And that's a big impact. No, and, and, and I started to see that right away. You know, because that was one of the things that you know, because my parents. Right. They bought the new house, but then when they bought the new house, well, what happens when, with most families, when they buy a new house? Budget. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Budget changes, you know? Yeah. So, and we were never ones to like dress all fancy or anything, but when we started to go to these new schools, we started to see that the kids we were going to school with dressed way different. Wow. And Boy. that was one of the biggest insecurities there because. Man, you know, we went so, back to school because we got the house during summer. Right. And when we went back to school, we still had the same wardrobe. Yeah. What what type of it wasn't just a regular wardrobe, right? None nothing like gangster or long shirts. No, my parents did. My parents were super strict you, with huh? that. Yeah. yeah, they were like, you know, even though we're like we grew up in that, like we we would try to get away with wearing certain things, right. but my parents were quick to like, nope. You know what I mean? Like you better throw that yeah. away. Like they've cut. They used to cut. Did you guys like grow up going to church? Or? No, no. Church, church was church was like you know we pretty much grew up Catholic. You know, okay. I mean that was what we identified with. You right. know, we identified as you know we were baptized Catholic. Uh, my dad, but as far as like regular church attendance or anything, no, no. My mom grew up as a Christian. She grew up in Christianity. You know, but you know she has a she has a crazy testimony too. My mom, but my mom walked away. You know, once um, when she got pregnant with my with my brother, my brother right. was um, she was pregnant with my brother when she was fif- fifteen. Man, oh wow, oh, young. she got him young, yeah. yeah, young, young. So so she she walked away from the faith, man, and um, you know, so church was never really a priority, you know. Um, but yeah, man, you that's know, crazy, yeah. yeah. So so we just kind of like you know, and that's what I identify with so much, man, is that you know, with um, insecurity. Yeah. You know, because it's it. You know, I I firsthand saw the effects of it. You know, right. well, let's talk about that. Yeah. Like this insecurity, and you're starting to see that your your clothes are not the same quality or match. So your society, you feel like you're odd man out, right? Yeah. And then you kind of did, did you ever feel like you were poor, or did you ever feel like you were like uh, not enough? Oh yeah, right. right? 
Yeah, not enough, man. I think the biggest thing was like, yeah, man, I don't fit in. Okay, so like all insecurities have like a reaction, right? Right. What was your reaction? Was it anger? Was it uh, I, I like shutting down? Or what was that? Yeah, so so one thing that, that you know, kind of, I mean, and just to kind of tie that question in, man, is that, you know, it really did go back to kind of what Brian was asking right now about my relationship with my dad. Right. You know, because growing up, I really wanted to fit in with my dad. You know, but my dad, you know, I always felt that rejection from him. Oh, wow. You know, and I know that maybe it wasn't done on purpose, but I always felt like he didn't really want us around him. Uh, right. How so? Like, what, what do you say at rejection? What is, what is, give me an example of what that looked like. Yeah. So, you know, as a kid, you always, you know, you always want to be around your dad. Right. You know, I, as a boy, especially, you know, like, um, you know, I, and I always wanted to be around my dad, you know, and my dad, he was, he was a wild, he was a, he was a wild one. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and not in a bad way, not in a violent way or anything like that. He was just the party of the life. My, like, yeah, life was, of the party. My dad yeah. was the life of the party. You know, every every you know every Hispanic family knows the fiestas, the quinceañeras, yeah. the weddings. But you know, those bailes. My dad, he used to he he loved that atmosphere, and so a lot of times, you know, I I feel that he didn't want us there, and and a lot of times he didn't want us there. You know, he you know we were like, Dad, can we go with you and. And so we would get that a lot, like, no, you guys stay here, you guys right. stay here, you guys stay here. You know, and even and even growing up though, like a lot of times, like things that I wanted to do, you know, things that I wanted to show him, things that I wanted to like, yo, dad, like come look at me, like, or come play sports with me. Like we never got that from yeah. him. And so what that created in me, now I understand a lot more, but what that created in me was always a desire to please and to be accepted. Right, you were looking and for that approval, and this is. I always was looking for that approval, and this is important because, you know, you have a dad. There's a lot of, especially in the Hispanic, that they're, yeah. they're, they give you. They always say, "Oh, you have a house, right? I work right. for you guys," but it's deeper than that, right? That's yeah, what earlier I asked yeah. you. How's how's the re- connection with your dad? How's the relationship, right? Because I had my dad. He did give us a house, right? He worked. I had what I wanted, but I didn't have connection with them, right? right? I wanted to talk to him. I wanted him to tell me, how's your day? Let's talk about your day, right? right? But instead, when I got bullied or I got, I had to get in a fight, I would just keep it to myself. Right. So I started just creating anxiety, just just don't know where to, where to talk to, who to talk to, right? And then that's when it's, it could get dangerous because that's when gangs start coming in, right? 100%. Bad, uh, bad influence start coming in. Why? Because they show you love. Right. Right? They show you that we'll protect you, right? That yeah. protection, that unity, and, and you start... You don't even, you just go on yourself and you start hanging out with these guys. Right. And then that kid, that young kid that was nice and starts becoming even a murderer in the future, you know? So that's why it's very important for connection and, 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 and it's relationship. It's crazy too, right? Because they like, like we don't realize it, but when right. you kind of get into that that direction and then you start going to that gain activity, often you're, you're going to find yourself in a system. Right. And you're going to find in a gain activity system and then you're going to find yourself in the law system. And then, like, once you get in that system, you never really quite get out, huh? Right. And unless, unless some sort of a miracle of resources you're able to do. But that's yeah. that's such an interesting, that to me, bro, that's really deep what you're talking about. Because yeah. It's like, it almost sounds like you wanted, you wanted your dad to talk to you and, and to acknowledge your, and to share your right. emotions. 100%. You, you sound like yeah. you didn't have that. Yeah, 100%, man. You know, and I love my dad. Like, to this day, you know, with my dad, um, I love him. I love my dad and I respect him so much. And mm. um, but even to this day, um, our relationship is is much better, but it's super awkward. Really, you know, right. it's super awkward. Is it because it's not transparent, huh? Exactly, because it's not transparent. Because um, you know, because of as a child and even as an adult, like where we've tried to have conversations and they always turn out, you know, just just like you know, not. Not clear, you know, not yeah. being able to to express ourselves without, you know, without being able to, you know, hey, you know, we're just, let's just express ourselves. Let's just express ourselves. Let's just talk. Why do you think that is that they don't want to express I, Well, themselves? I think the, I think the reason why is, and that's why, like, I, I really don't blame my dad. You know, mm-hmm. this isn't, this isn't about blaming, you know, this really just is about, because I know that there's people out there that, that might have gone through this and might feel this way. Right. But I think that the biggest thing is that we're afraid of what we feel. 
or there's people that do doing this like your dad. They're doing what your dad did. Exactly. They're just doing what they did to them. Right. You know what I mean? And that's so that's so common, especially in a lot of cultures. You know, not just in in Hispanic culture, but in a lot of cultures. That's so common is that you know, however they were raised, and if you look at the relationship, because I'm I'm I, I know my grandpa. You know, I lived in. That's another thing we can get into right now. But I lived in Mexico for two years, and when I lived there. You know, um, I got to deal with my grandpa because I live with my grandma and grandpa. Oh, and my grandpa, man, he was just, he was all about work, getting the work done. And 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 that's where, you know, if you did a good job, you know, like you would kind of feel like, okay, grandpa's happy. Yeah. But if you made did a mistake, a job, if yeah. you, like, if you were, he was super critical, man, my right. grandpa. And, and I love my grandpa, man. He's a trip. I love him, dude. And, and this is and your he's dad's such dad, a hard right? worker. That's my dad's dad. Okay. But it makes so much sense yeah. why my dad and my uncles, you know, they are the way they are. Right. So you could see the you could see the generational I see the generational right. pattern. Yeah. Pattern, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I okay, so let's this has to come all this insecurity, all these feelings that you're just we're talking about. I mean, it's real. I would like right. to continue on this journey with you. So where where does all this leads you at? Like, where does high school look like at this time now? No, well, see, there's a lot in between. Man. Oh, really? There is okay. a lot in between. That's why my story is is an offbeat story, man. Ooh, okay, all it right. really is, man. Because nothing in my life happened normal. Okay, you know, when you look at someone that you could say, "Hey, that's normal." Elementary, junior high, high school, graduate. You get confused in college. Okay, big deal. You experience, blah, blah, blah. That's typical what right. somebody would say. Yeah, that's a normal life. I didn't have that, man. What, what was the, what was like junior high? Can we so, start there? Yeah, so from elementary, that's kind of where I, after elementary, I went into junior high. Well, in Vegas, they call it middle school. Okay, yeah. And so when I went into middle school, you know, again, like that wanting to prove something was in me. Right. You know what I mean? Like, so, I, you know, instead of being that person that, with insecurities that wanted to be accepted, like, you know, if, hey, if you don't accept me, okay, I'll just walk away from you. That wasn't me. And I wish that was me, right. but that wasn't me. And so my thing was that like, okay, they don't accept me. They don't, you know, they they make fun of me. They make fun of my clothes. You know what I mean? Like, you know, well, right. it is what it is, but you know what? Like, I'm going to, I'm going to do whatever I can to fit in. Mm. And that's where my identity crisis started to come in. All right, you know, because then I, I, yeah, I struggled a lot with identity crisis. In my, I've, I've gone through big phases, man, right. in okay. my life. You know, so now I'm here, like, you know, I was right here, you know, trying to be a gangster. You know, <laughs> most of my elementary, then boom, I come to a new neighborhood, new school, and now all of a sudden, man, it's like you know, pretty boy vibes yep. and uh, skater vibes, rollerblader <laughs> vibes. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, you know what I mean? Just a Typical. cool kid, yeah. you know? Um, so now, like, I'm like, you know what? Like, I got to change my wardrobe, you know? So summer, you know, we convinced our parents to kind of help us out. We mm. raised up a, a, a little bit of money, too. You know right. what I mean? Like, we did we did some, we did, uh, you know, we were mowing lawns at that time, right. you know, doing different things, man. How are we cats to get money? This is middle school, right? Okay. Once we were going into middle school. Okay. So we did. And we did. We were able to, you know, my brother too, I think he was in high school already. He was going into high school. All right. We got to change our wardrobes a little bit. And now we're like, okay, we fit in. You know, little polo, little Nike Air Force Ones. Yeah. Or? yeah like, well, I don't even know. Like, <laughs> at that time, pops? it was just like, man, I don't even remember like what the style was. like. Big shirts, big pants? <laughs> not really. No, not you big pants. Your on. Well, yeah, FUBU was, yeah, FUBU, FUBU was yeah. a big deal. Was I remember, a big deal. I remember yeah. somebody taking their life. Over Fubu because it was yeah. a fake, yeah. uh, you know. Mecca, 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 Mecca. all that. What Jinko? about the lugs? Jinko jeans. What about the lugs? You guys met the lugs. Lugs, lugs were lugs. starting to come in a little bit. Um, that was more like a mid nineties, late nineties on lugs, right? Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. So you know, so we started to 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 blend in. We started to fit in. We started to look like the kids from that belonged in that neighborhood, right? And um, you know, we started to make new friends, new spheres. You know what I mean? And um, but you know what? Like there was always something inside that always just kind of made you still feel like, you know what? You have the clothes, you have this, but you're still this, you're still this guy. Mm. You, just, you haven't right. arrived to that, right. that identity. Yeah, because you would go to these kids' houses sometimes and you would see, man, they had these big old houses. Or, Damn. you know, you would see how their parents were there, how their parents would treat them. Right. And you always have that in the back of your head where like, man, you know what? Like 
And so the biggest turn for me during middle school, man, was um, and um, and I really, you know, I'm going to share this, man, because it's um, it's something that really I really believe that it was a start for me to just kind of kind of kind of little by little spiral down. OK. And, um, you know, what happened, man, is that we were, you know, I was in sixth grade. Right. You know, I was 11 years old, 11 years old at that time. And, you know, an incident had happened. I'm not going to get into too much details, but an incident had happened because at that time we would take the school bus and it was me and two other friends, two or three other friends. And there were there were girls involved, too. And, um, you know, we were honestly, we were innocently just doing what boys and girls do. OK. Right? And um, we got a little carnal. It got. Yeah, man, it got, <laughs> you know, but but it never crossed the line. You know, right. it never went into a place where. So anyways, man, what happened was like, it's again, man, you're in a different school, you're in a different environment, man. And I'm not trying to blame that on anything. But what happened is that once, you know, somebody, somebody saw and somebody reported this and they reported it in a way where, where, you know, like where the, the dean, the dean from the school, you know, got, got a hold of it and everything, you know, um, brought us all in, you know, questioned us and, you know, we were all pretty Kind of transparent so about so, it. Right. This situation happened at school? This situation oh, in the school dang. bus. Oh, okay. on a school yeah, bus. Yeah, in the school bus. Oh, okay. Sixth grade. Yeah, sixth grade, you know. And um, you know, and so honestly, we're you know, we're eleven years old, man. We're 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 children, you right. know. So they talk to us and you know, we're scared. You know, I'm scared. You know, they they end up suspending us, you know, they end up suspending us and what I did your mom and dad say. Oh, you know, they were you know, and that was another thing, is just that the way they would take things, man, it was just like yeah, you know what, we're at, it's our fault. You know, like, you know, they never really bothered or cared to ever really ask questions, ask questions or well, well, try to teach us or what happened. Yeah, exactly. There man. was no investigation. Yeah. So we're, you know, so they were just like, what, you know, like, see, like, you know, like, that's what you get, blah, blah, mm. blah. And I'm just like, man, you know, so our, we have a teacher conference or a dean conference right. and I didn't expect what was going to happen, man. So I show up to school. And when I show up to school, I see a cop car. What? Mm. And I'm like, I didn't really think much of it. But then I start to get nervous, more and more nervous. Right. And then that's when, um, you know, we're we're meeting with the dean. And then as the dean, you know, is saying, you know, this, you know, we talk to the parents. You know, the parents um, want to, you know, they want to they want to press charges, like, because of the situation. And my mom is like, what? What? Like, what do you mean? And in that moment, the cops come in, you know, and the cops, you know what I mean? Like, you know, they didn't treat me any, they didn't treat me like a child. You know, they treated me like a criminal. But they got to. At a young so age. So at, at 11 years man. old, man, you know, they handcuffed me at school. Oh, damn. And, um, you know, and they took me in. And that okay, was the pause, first time I went pause, to. Whoa, pause, whoa, whoa. I, oh, Yo, yo, yo. You, you, you're, you're just skipping emotions here, bro. Man. Okay, so hold up. So you, they, I'm they, telling you, man, my story is complex, oh, bro. So they, oh, they, so they they cuffed you. What were you What were you feeling, bro? You know what? There was a lot of emotions, but I think like I, if I can remember clearly, and, I, and it's a trip because I, I, I man, dude, I, I I'll never forget those feelings. Right. But I remember in that feeling, man, like I felt like this is who I am. You're a criminal at a young age. I'm a criminal. Man. You're a bad person. I'm a bad dude. I'm a bad person. I'm. This is my destiny. Like, wow. growing up, I grew up seeing what I saw for a reason, and that's exactly who I am. And, and moving and going to a different school and doing that didn't change that, because no matter what, this is who I am. And, and so whatever around you, that's, what's gonna, that's the outcome all the, all the time. When it comes to George, you will always right. produce bad. Yeah. And that's so it when it you. Bro, that's, that's when it. That's heavy, bro. Yeah. That's heavy, man. You're yeah. just 11 years old. Right. Just 11 years old, man. So, it, so you could say it scarred you a little bit, right? It, it did, gave man. you like some sort of identity as that, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. And I didn't spiral down right away. Right. Don't get me wrong, like, right, right. but that's why I said it. From that moment, it was a lot easier for me to spiral down. Wow. Right. Yeah. Well, that makes total sense because you, you were, you were in a place of just. It, it kind of made it kind of gave you a conclusion, you know. It kind of made you count, you know. Eleven years old, yeah. And, and you know what's interesting? They they took him away, hoping that George will learn the this, this decision you made has consequences. 
but not realizing that it's all this is happening. Yeah, the justice part. If not, it's affecting his identity right. as, a, as an 11 year old kid. Right. Yeah. And we're talking about a, a 11 year old kid who has an underdeveloped psychology. Yeah. Is he's that legal? Developed yet. I mean, I haven't even had puberty yet. <laughs> Man, I don't know, legal. but you know what? I and, and for a long time, I didn't talk about that? it. For a long time, I didn't talk about it, you know. And, um, and I remember one time I finally, um, when I was, you know, because every now and then I'll go do therapy. And and one time I opened up about it to my therapist, you know, and we're, it was it was in regards to to kind of what we were talking about, and I just I told her the story, and and it, for the first time I was able to hear that man, how could they do that to you? Because right. for for the longest, even as an adult, like I always thought, like yeah, I, I deserve that. Touch my wow. kid like that. No, no, no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I think today that I can't believe I even that 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 was flying by. Right. You know that the way that you went that situation was yeah. awful. Yeah. At yeah. first, I'm sorry that you went through that, bro. Dude, that's, <laughs> We're here that's with you, awful, man. man. <laughs> no way. Okay, yeah. so you get locked up. How yeah. long were you locked up for? So they they you know they booked me, they they detained me, and then um you know my mom was able to pick me up that same day. You know, but but you know again like you know in me it it just it did something. You know, and when everything was said and done, you know, everything was pretty much dropped. Right. You know what I mean? Everything was pretty much dropped, you know. But by then, dude, I, I have this scar in my life. Wow. You know, like I've 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 reopened I've reopened what I used to dream because that was just, that's what's crazy is that I used to dream about those things as a kid, you know, because that's the environment I grew up in. I was like, Yeah, I'm gonna be a gangster. And now I find myself here eleven years old. You know, thinking that I had escaped that, thinking that, oh, we moved to a better place. Right. But then I'm like, nope, nope, George, you're just a thug, you know. Right. And then when you have police officers telling you that, too, it's hard. Was, man. It the, was it the environment? Was it more of a strict environment? Right. You know what I mean? Like, as far as the law enforcement and all that, for I, that to even happen, because I don't think that's. Well, that I, right. I, I know that I know that I know that today the justice system and even the school systems have changed a lot. Right. You know, I know that they have, you know, like I'm because like even with my kids, I'm a lot more involved, you know. Mm. So um, so I try to like look into certain things myself, you know what I mean? Um, but I just you know what? Like I, and again, I, I know everything happens for a reason, but right. some things are still messed up. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, you know what? I, yeah. I'm thinking about this, what you're talking about. You know, you're talking about like so far. You're talking. You change your clothes. You change location. You know, you change friends and all this. But the problem still exists within you. And you know what's interesting? A pill can't take care of that. A drink can't take care of that. Mm. Yeah. Your material, any material that you're talking about. This is a 11 year old kid that not even a medication to take care of. Yeah. And so I'm starting to think there's an unmet this unmet need of emotion this kid needs to be told you are not this person yeah right? then also this kid needs to be told you have a future yeah and i'm starting to realize the power of an adult voice yeah. to right. be spoken to a kid right. you know what i'm saying like right. like i think that's the medicine your voice is a medicine if you are if you i mean we talk about we we off beat Offline, we talk a lot about like culture not right. expressing, like your dad not expressing. And I, I love how you're so gracious. You know, it's not his, it's not his fault. You know, you only do what you know. But I mean, right. I think it's all about we're living a life to get better. And this is right. it. Use right. your voice, man. Yeah. Right, right? Yeah. And that's why, man, Offbeat Podcast is, is, is so vital. Right. You know, I really believe it, man. I, I, it's, it's something that burns within my heart because. Like you said, man, that's it's crazy because that's exactly when I was going through therapy, that's exactly what my therapist told me. Because man, like when I expressed a lot of things and I op started to open up about all these bottled up emotions, you know, I started to break down, man, you know, because and she told me she's like, "What do you want to say? What do you want to say to that 11-year-old?" And <laughs> and um you know, and, and I was like, and she's like, George, say it. Say what you wanted to say. And I, I remember I started to mumble a few things. She's like, no, George, say it. 
And yeah, man, and that's exactly, I was like, man, you're, this is not you. Yeah. This is not you. you you're right. you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. You made a mistake. You shouldn't have been there. Learn from this. I'm going to walk through this with you. Right. We're going to get through this together, but you are not a criminal. You are not what they say you are. This, these handcuffs do not identify you. This system is not going to get a hold of you, nor is it going to identify right. you. And it, it, this is so uh, massive, right? right. Yeah. Because, okay, so like, I mean, let's just, obviously this is, there's so much to pull from, but like, what's so crazy is that the words of affirmation is medicine. Mm. Big time. You know, and, I, and like, I, I always talk to my kids and I'm always speaking well of them. I, I, we sit down at dinner tables and saying, and I make my kids say, what's the best quality in your sibling? And they mm. are like, oh my God, okay. And then like, <laughs> okay. and it's so like, my son will be like, all right, fine. She's the best, like, artist in our family. Yeah. She's amazing. <laughs> oh, and yeah. then she's the best dancer and she's the most funniest. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, because let's build each other up, right? right. Yeah. And I think that's what we need to be teaching young people how to build up, especially today's society right. where yeah. the phone is like we have keyboard warriors, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. everybody has the credit, everybody's upset. It's not enough of that. Just, just no, you're doing okay, man. Yeah, we, we got to, okay. I always say this, we got to be the human emojis. Right? Yeah, the human emojis. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm serious, because it's like, no, and you're 100% right, man. And, and, you know, and I believe that that has, and, and, you know, and I'm grateful. It sucks, but I'm grateful at the same time, you know, because if it wasn't for those experiences, and sometimes like, you know, I, I wouldn't be at a place now, you know, where, where I was able to, where I'm able to understand a lot of things, you know, and even within my children, right. You know, and like you said, man, with my children, you know, um, you know, just the other day, man, I was talking to Brian about it, man, and, and I'm going to talk about it, you know, like a little bit. But I was just kind of telling him that, you know, it sucks when when there's people that try to influence you on how you should treat your kids. Mm. And coming from where I come from, that's a big no-no because right. that was my whole life. Right. My parents, all they did was correct me based off what other people would say. Mm. They never bothered to ask questions. Hey, George, like, how are you? You know, what happened? What's your side of the story? Hey, how can we learn from this? How can we, how can we move on from this? What can you do better from this? Mm. It was always correction out of, you know, if, if a mom would bring me to, if a mom would bring, you know, me to my mom, hey, your son did this. It was like, what? Oh, right away, discipline. You know what's interesting, too? This is crazy. I guess as a parent, you have a kid, and this is part of you. And then the information of this person, the child, right. you know that you, you sometimes automatically, naturally feel like you instantaneously know this person. Right. And what happens here, if we let that be the driver's seat mm. concept, we have no responsibility getting to know our kid. Mm. And so we don't need to investigate. We don't need to, we don't need to be curious about our kids. We just, the, our, curi our curiosity goes to suspicious. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, like of course you did this. Thing. Like, you idiot. Or you're like, oh, what are you thinking? And right. it's like, it's all like addressing mistakes and right. bad behavior and yeah. all those things but and it's never really like like yeah. hey like well why did you do this and like or how come how come that makes you feel like yeah. that well, exactly. why were you angry today? yeah and yeah. what and what that does is that exact like in my experience what that did to me was that it left me with no confidence oh uh, hunter mm. so well, be a man yeah <laughs> be so a man. so where no did confidence. i so my confidence was so always yeah. in what others thought about me that's gnarly yeah you know, so can I can can we go into another gear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I I feel like this is this right here. I'm I'm curious about you said you mentioned earlier about how it's you felt like you were you kind of it led you to spiraling out. Yeah. So tell me about that, or tell us. You know. Right. Yeah. Audience. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So 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 when all that happened, when all that was said and done, everything was dropped. Everything was good. I went on. I couldn't go back to that school. Okay. So that was another big mark. 
You know, it's like, okay, yeah, they don't even want you at that school. So from there, I went back to the school where I was originally, where I used to grow up, uh where I was usually zoned for. So if I would have stayed in the projects throughout middle school, that's the school I would have went to. So because we had a family member that still lived around there. So what happened was that we, you know, my mom had to use their address. And then they're like, well, this is the closest school to you. You know what I mean? Like, we can't drive you far. You know what I mean? Like, we both work. You know, this is the best we can do. So I was like, whatever. You know what I mean? And so little by little, I started to get reintroduced back to my friends. Mm. But I didn't spiral right away. But what ended up happening is that that old identity, little by little, started to kind of creep back. Creep back. It started to kind of creep back where, you know, I was eager to fight. You know, where I was back to where, like, fighting wasn't a thing. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you know... Fights in school, being the class clown, mm. you know what I mean? Getting in trouble with the teachers, getting suspended. Um, you know, I wasn't gang banging yet. You know what I mean? I wasn't like, I wasn't really pulled into that yet, but like little by little. Naturally, yeah, naturally, yeah, naturally you know, coming back. I think the only thing that really held me back, and that's when I went through my soccer player phase. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I was through my soccer player phase, man. And, um, you know, I played soccer. And um, I joined a league. And honestly, that really helped me because because a lot of the after school things was like, yo, after school, you got to go to soccer practice. Mm, kept you busy. And, and it kept me busy. Yeah. And, I, and I wanted to do it, you know, right. so I w- it wasn't a big deal to me. So that kept me away from a lot of, because a lot of my, my friends during that time, like after school, they were running amok. Yeah. You know, like they were up to no good. And but I was playing soccer, okay. you know, and then Saturdays I was playing soccer games, things like that. So you had an activity and that kept yeah. you occupied. Yeah. And discipline. Yeah, but I still I still carried myself with, you know, with that. I still, you know, dealt with those issues in my life. Yeah. You know, so um, you know, the girlfriend thing, you know, that all that, you know, during middle school, you know, I went through all that and and that also kept me busy, you know, and 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 um kind of like looking towards something. But then little by little, man, it just, you know, I was, my grades started, you know, declining. I started to hang out, you know, with the wrong friends, was fighting a lot. So that's when my uh, parents were like, look, man, we don't know, we don't know what to do with you. So if you keep it up, you know, like you're going to go to Mexico, you know, Mm. like you're going to go to Mexico. And we would always. So you're still in middle school at this point? Yeah. Yeah. Because I was uh, seventh or eighth grade. Okay. And we would go to Mexico a lot. Like it was like a yearly thing, you know? And so I love Mexico. Yeah. I love that was that was one of my probably top favorite things as a child. You know, okay, like right. as far as outside of the hood. Loved going to Mexico. I I in I um I immersed myself in the culture. Right. Like to this day, like man, I love did you I feel, love my culture. Did you feel a sense of like freedom when you were in Mexico, a sense of oh, yeah. you forgot who you were. Yeah, yeah. Like right? I could, yeah. Like you know, I was, I you know, the the kids there was a different vibe. Different vibe. You had yeah. freedom. Well, and it's, it almost sounds like going to Me- Mexico, like was more like a disassociation. Mm. Yeah. You disassociated yourself from the projects. Yeah. You disassociate. Right. It kind of like it gave you a fresh start. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, it, and, and so did and you end up going to Mexico? Yeah, so so I remember so that year like they kept they kept threatening me, they kept threatening me, they kept threatening me. And then you know, and then like that year I remember we went and I was 13 years old at that time. We went to Mexico and it was like I I've always loved horses. I was always into that, you know. So uh, and then uh, ranchero and all that. Yeah, super ranchero, you know, like I was all into that, bro. The the a cowboy ranchero. hat, the, the boots, you know what I mean? Like uh, working in the field was no thing for me. You know, what I mean? it was hard work, but it was it was really no thing. Right. So when they finally said, you know what, like, you know, you're going to, I said, you know what? Okay, I'll do it. I'll stay. And they're like, really? Yeah. And so they threatened me for so long that now it's like they can't back out. My, right. And I remember my and mom. You know she, what? You got to think about it too. Like you got a kid <laughs> like saying, fine, leave me here. You have to think this worse than the budget. Right. Like this is, you know, what I'm saying like, you know what, Georgia, like giving me a break on my budget. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and your your brother, like, yes, yeah, now we brother, can go yeah, eat at restaurants. Right. I know, man. I got the computer to myself. No, <laughs> no, but yeah. So I was like, okay. And it was supposed to be just for six months, and I was supposed to go to school, things like that. And I was like, okay, fine. You know, but man, 
Six months ended up turning into two years. Dang. Yeah. So that's going to be a pain money. Yeah. Uh, so, did you get your English a little bit? Uh, no, no, not even. Not even. I mean, I, it was because, you know, you're over there and, and, and you still have friends that a lot of people just visit all the time. In the well, why did you come back? <laughs> well, yeah. So, like, yeah, that's a good question, man. Because honestly, like, I, I was like loving it. it. I was loving it. Right. But you know what, man? So, okay, At, you came back two years and that means you were 15? Yeah, when I was 15. And, um, you know, so over there, man, I, I fit in like a glove. I fit in right. like a glove. Like I had my horse. Okay. Um, you know, I used to, you know, the charriadas? Uh, I yeah, used to the, do I used what? to do the charriadas, the rodeos. Yeah, I, I used you, to do that. Through the rope and yeah. the, the, okay. Yeah. The yeah. yeah, I used Little to do all that, man. I used to, oh, like, yeah, man. But, but that freedom. Right, it's different, man. <laughs> that freedom came with a price, though. Because Ooh. that's where I started my two-pack-a-day cigarette habit. What? 13 years old, bro. 13, you're smoking cigarettes. Two packs a day. Two and, packs. and it's like, they, they sell it to you, right? There's yeah. no, they don't ID you. They're, it's yeah. easy access. Yeah. And, um, you know, as far as like drinking, it was just more like peer pressure. Just right. kind of, it was never really something I liked. It was just more like, you know, do it to just have fun. Yeah. Right. But, you know, 13 years old, man. Yeah. You know, 13 years old and I, 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 I wilded out, you know, and there was even a time where... Um, cause I would help my grandpa, I would help him in the fields and do all these things. But then there did come a time where, you know, I stopped, I stopped wanting to help, you know, and mm -hmm. I was just, I just wanted to party. Like, right. I just wanted like where, like, cause in, in Mexico back, like even today, but back in those days, like every, almost every day there was something, man, somewhere. Really? Oh, I can imagine. Yeah, right. and like whether it be a, a rodeo or horse races or uh, rooster fights. Um, I mean, it was. It, it was it was beautiful. I I loved hey, it. You're living a you're living. A I was living it up, bro. Yeah. So, but then my grandparents they got to the point too where they're like, you know, my grandma, my gr and 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 that's where, with my grandma though, my grandma, is where, for the first time, I felt I love my mom, right. And I'm gonna be very careful with how I say this because I don't want to say the wrong thing. I love my mom. I love her. But she had her own things that stopped her from being able to love us, mm. you know, a certain way, you know, which, you, which I get. Yeah, in other words, you're talking about, like, uh, a, to meet you accordingly. Yeah. Right, I know what you're saying, yeah. So for the first time in my life, when I, especially when I lived out there, growing up, I always felt it. But especially when I lived out there is when I actually felt the love, the embrace of a mom through my grandma. Wow. Oh, wow. And how so? What did, what did that look like? Well, what, what she just mean? had this unconditional love. That warm, that warm love. That huh? warm, yeah. unconditional love where she could see, and I'm not saying that that's the best thing, but she could see, she could see the bad, but she would never judge me for the bad. Mm. She would talk to you for the good. She would talk to me, and even when she would correct me, it would be in such a way that I was like, wow, like, you're not yelling at me? Right. Like you're not throwing a chunk at me. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting ready to run. Like yeah. Like <laughs> like like wait, dude, head, wait, right? like wait, dude. Do I no matter how fast you run. Do, <laughs> wait, do I give you the belt or how does this work? <laughs> right. yeah. You right. know, and and that's why, you know, my grandma, um, she just man, we 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 had such a special connection with my grandma. Her name was Elva. Right. And we had such a special connection because like I said, you know, like my mom did a great job, you know, and she's a great woman. I love her. But my grandma, you know, she just she just knew how to how to embrace me. She knew how to talk to me. And and that was what I always I always felt like I needed because I, I always felt like I was the bad apple. Mm -hmm. I always felt like I was the, the black, black sheep. sheep. Right. Mm -hmm. I always felt that, you know what, I, I was always if I I'm going to do something bad. I already know that the way they're going to receive me is this way. But my grandma never did, you know. Yeah, and so it and, kind of uh, caught you by so, surprise, huh? It did. So then you coming back home at fifteen, back to Vegas. Yeah, and so tell us more. So now, now you're in high school. Yeah, I finally yeah. had to come back, dude, because it was like, it was, it was. You know what? Like, it just being in Mexico was tight. It was cool. I loved it. Loved the culture, but I was like, it did come a point where I'm like, man, I gotta do something with my life. <laughs> <laughs> I can't party for two years. You know, yeah, exactly. Like, 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 so, because okay, so even in that time, you didn't you didn't do school. I did, but very little. 
Okay, so then you did school, and yeah. then you come back to high school. So then I did come back. Did you have back. a culture shock again? Big time. Okay. Right. So Big you get, now time. living with mom and dad. Yeah, back went, with your brother. Yeah. And then, yeah, like, and then same thing, like, nothing and, changed. And were you still smoking? How did you? Yeah, dude, did, still smoking cigarettes, man. Rajos. You know, still, you know, and then from there, like, man, it was a big culture shock for me, dude. Big culture shock. Like, I really, uh, it, it, you know, I remember coming back and then my dad still still being the same way towards right. me, you know, like, and then that just started to really discourage me, man. Did you start because, feeling a sense of uh, the old George coming back? Yeah, because here's the thing that, like, you know, like, my dad's friends, because this, this is just to kind of paint you guys a picture. Right. So... My dad, my dad's family, my uncles, his friends, and everything, like they always had a love for me. Like right. they, they were really cool people. Growing up, they always like they call me la raicita, raicita, and they're like, "Orale raicita," you know. And they would, when we created a real good bond. But my dad would, he was always kind of like that guy that, that like he was just like for me. Right. Like when it came to him, it wasn't like that. But when it came to me, like he was just that party pooper. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. he was just like, what are you doing? You know, like, for anything. Like, he would just judge me and just right. so overly critical of me and everything. And so, after, when I first came back to, to from Mexico, the only people I could truly identify with were my uncles and were my friends from El Rancho. Okay. Mm. And so, I tried to go back into that circle, but my dad, like, he was just overly, like, critical, over judgmental. where I'm like, dude, I don't even want to be around here anymore. Right. So then I get registered back in high school. And when I get registered back in high school, I go to Las Vegas High. I go in. I get held back because <laughs> I didn't go to school oh. in Mexico. So I go back to ninth grade. I should be in 10th grade, but I go back to ninth grade. So I'm like, whatever, it, you know. So you didn't go to school in Mexico? I did and I didn't. But it, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then I didn't bring back any transcripts, like proof that I was, <laughs> like, you know, like that was because they don't even have transcripts Good, over man. there, bro. Like, you know, so I came back, man. And. Oh, bro, like I started to find all a lot of the friends that went to my first middle school right. and, 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 and and a lot of friends from fifth grade from the new elementary school when we had moved. I started to see them mm. and they were so different, so different. Like they they were in their own world. They had their own, you know, they had their own they had their own cliques, right. um, you know. Some of them were potheads. <laughs> yeah. Some of them were like skaters. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the girls, they were all with the popular ones. And bro, like, I just felt like, I felt like just, just this paisita. Is <laughs> <laughs> it still Because I was yeah. like, I was dark. Like, I came back super dark and <laughs> right. super red. Like, wow. when I came back from Mexico, the, the sun in Mexico hits different. Yeah. But I was, you know, I, I did that, man. And, and it was such a culture shock, man. So that's, so from there, all the emotions started to come back to me. Mm. I don't fit in. You know, I don't know what to do, man. Like, I just, you know, I would, I, so I literally would go to school and I didn't know what to do. I couldn't, I didn't know where to sit. Right. I didn't know where to, man, I felt so insecure, man. Right. So one day I finally, like, it was me and my brother and we went to, to uh, Albertsons. It was in Albertsons close by the house at that time. And we went and lo and behold, man, I, I see Two of my old friends. Okay. Back from the hood. Oh, projects. And they were like straight bald headed. Oh, they were balon. Uh, they were like cholo bolos. Big jackets, gangster. Oversized pants. The creased up 501 Levi's. Ooh, Cortez's. I mean, they were G'd up, like we used to say. They were G'd up. And I look <laughs> at them and I'm like, yo. You know, not to, I don't want to say their names, but I was like, yo. And they're like, oh what's up like you know what i mean and they like man like you know yeah. like bro you know and the first time since being back i get this response they're like bro yo check this out man like man get my number get my number Damn. acceptance acceptance mm. man hit me up hey tomorrow we're gonna throw uh we're gonna throw a kickback hit me up so you can come through a kickback is a party right kickback, kickback is a party yeah. <laughs> and i'm like i didn't know what to do right I, in school, I didn't fit in. So what do I do? I hit them up. Damn. And they're like, hey, what's up? Yeah, I just woke up, but come through, come through. I'm like, all right, all right, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch the bus like I'm going to school, but I'll, I'll catch the bus to your house. And sure enough, man, from there, that's where I started to spiral. 
Really? Mm. That's when I started so to get involved in this whole thing. So to that day, to that point, I wasn't involved really in gangs or anything like that. Like I had growing that growing up background and everything. Right. And I had some crazy tendencies myself. You mm. know what I mean? Like I, I was a brawler, dude. I was a fighter. Like mm. I used yeah. to love to fight. Um, and you know, stealing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I was, you know, I had a lot of habits, bad habits, you know what I mean? But lo and behold, man, when, you know, I have these two friends right here, man. Welcoming you. Yeah. And they were best yeah. friends growing up. Okay. You know, these were best friends, you know, one of them, um, you know, one of them is he, he passed away already. You wow. know, he was, right. he was actually murdered out in Mexico. Wow. And then the other one, he's, um, you know, he's doing, he's doing a long time. Okay. Know? And he's, um, he's doing time in prison. Yeah. Yeah. So, so from here on out, what does life look like? How long were you in this for? Yeah, so from there, man, um, I dropped out of school. So I literally only went to high school. I have a history of actually going to high school of two weeks. No way. Did Be you ever complete high school? I got my GD. Okay. And I, that, so that's, you, yeah. you never did the high school experience. Yeah. So no, no, I never got the high school experience, man, because, because once they came into my, my life... It was easier for me. You know, I don't blame them, but it was easier for me because I could connect with them. I knew the lingo. I knew them growing up, right. you know, and, and they accepted me. They, they, they wanted me. You know, they wanted me in their group. You know what I mean? And, and that's yeah. the thing about gangs, man, is that as long as you, you can start to fit in, you know what I mean? Like, and, and, right. and you identify with them and, you know, they're, they're always going to embrace you. You know, they will right. always embrace you. Like bad influence. It's like, like the saying says, misery loves company. And right. it's not to say that they were miserable people, but the thing is that what they were doing is, man, they were up to no good. But if they have more people to do it with them, they don't care, man. Yeah. You know, so they started to embrace me, man, and, and little by little. And then I want to say like in about two, three weeks, man, I got jumped in. Wow. Right away. I got jumped yeah. in, man. So, then, I, so what was that life like being in the time of gangs? What was that life like? So like, was it, were you, did you get locked up again? Did you... Were you guys doing game fights? Were the, what was that all about? Yeah, yeah. So during that time, man, you know, it was very territorial. You know, right. during the time, like things have changed so much now. But during that time in Vegas, I'm talking about Vegas and Cali. Okay. I know it's always a little bit different. But in Vegas, it was very territorial. You know, so, um, you know, it, it was all about, you know, there was a big, big rivalry with mm -hmm. all, all different gangs. Mm -hmm. You know, so, yeah, it was, it was, um you know, I, I immersed myself in that life, man. And when I did, by that time, you know, we're all 15, 16 years old. We got 17-year-olds there, 18-year-olds there. Right. You know, and that's where I'm introduced, you know what I mean, to 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 a life of crime. Now, did, did you, you ever did you ever do any drugs, or anything like that? Yeah. So before I would just before that, I would just, you know, I would do I would do weed here and there. Okay. You know what I mean? I was never really a big weed head because I didn't really like to be a downer. You okay, know, like so I, did you do any like hard stuff? Yeah. So by that time, that's when, you know, they started to, I got introduced to crystal meth. Oh, damn. Because that was a big thing during, I mean, even to this day, man, yeah, it's a today, big epidemic. Yeah, that's even, that's today, that's yeah. a big day. But when it was first introduced, man, like, I mean, we got hooked on it. You know what I mean? Right. And, and and it was the whole thing about, you know, just being up. You know, it was, I was, because I love that. I love being up. I love being active. I, you know, and so what that drug did was like, it immediately hooked me. Wow. Mm. And it hooked my friends. And I mean, and, and. And it just does something to a person. That drug does right. something where it just, it turns you cold. And not only that, but I know that it, it, it changes the way your facials and, oh, and yeah. your physicality is yeah. oh, yeah. insane, right? Lose your teeth. Start losing yeah. your teeth. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then from there, uh, so you have this track. Now you were there to Vegas until 19? 18. 18. Okay. Yeah. And then where did that, what's that ship like? Look like we're getting. Look like we're, we're like arriving to another destination. Well, the thing is that from there, man, like like I said, like I was in a, you know, I introduced to this to this life of crime, life of drugs, you know. So at the age of sixteen, right. yeah, at the age of sixteen, that's when I catch my next case. Mm. So I caught a case in armed robbery, armed robbery, man. I got into a high speed chase. No way. Wow. Wait yeah, a minute. Man. So were you like Whoa. on the news and all that? I don't know, man, because I got locked up. <laughs> so, <there> was, <laughs> so we didn't get TV right away, man, like in the rec room or anything, man. So I don't know, man. But yeah, dude, I, I uh, it was a robbery, robbery. high speed chase. Yeah, I was, the, I was the getaway driver on that one, man. Oh, you were and, the uh, driver. Yeah. And then, um, you know, and I ended up with going into a high speed chase. We had a stolen vehicle and everything. And um, 
you know, I, of course, I ended up just like any high speed chase typically ends. I ended up crashing, oh. and then I remember I tried to run, man, but I was so so drugged out, man, that you know my lungs collapsed, bro. Like I I only got like half a block, you know what I mean? And they tackled me, and you know, so so there I am, you know what I mean? And so it's a big offense, you know, it's armed robbery, you know, GTA. High speed chase, evading police officers. Did you getting arrested? Did it take you back to when you were eleven? No, oh, I was already there. You're already there. I was already immersed. Like by that time, you like accepted. I, I accepted it. Right. By that time, I said, "Yup, this is what I'm destined to be. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a gangster." You mm. know what I mean? Like that's deep. I, you know what I mean? Like that's. I was like, man, you know what? I'm. That's who I am. Right. And I embraced it because I was so good at it. At least mm. that's what I thought. You know what I mean? I was like. You know what I mean? I mean? You weren't that good if you got exactly, caught. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But I was good at it at the like. But where, yeah, no, where, you were you were able to just do it naturally. It yeah. came naturally to you. Yeah, it came naturally, wow. and, and so, so did you feel so you, you get, did you? I'm sorry. No, did go you ahead, feel man. you did all this in order for them to accept you? Like, did you feel when you would do something a crime or anything that, yeah. that they wanted you to do? Did you do it like yeah, like I'm down? They'll like me more. Like right, more respect. Yeah, in right? the beginning. In the beginning, it right. really was. Like, in the beginning, because I think that's, like, any recruit. Just like yeah. any recruit. Right. Like, you got to prove yourself, right? You, you exactly. So, in the beginning, yeah, like, you know, and they would. They would always be like, ah, man, you don't, you know, you you don't, you know, you don't even put in work, you know, blah, blah, <laughs> yeah. blah. Like, you know, like, like shut up. You know what I mean? Like, so, and that would, that would, that would fuel Motivate. me, though. Yeah. That would fuel me. It, and I'd be like, all right, all yeah. right. Like, watch. It provoked you. It provoked right. me. You know what I mean? So, I was always the first to jump, the first to do things. Right. And so, until I finally proved myself. You know what I mean? And then after that, it just became me. Who you were. So you, know, just, you, you get locked up? So then, yeah, I get locked up. And then for from, how long? From, from there, like they, they sent me, I did about three months in the detention center while I waited my, my case. And then from there, they, because they do this whole process. And then they, they saw that I was a good candidate for a, it's a facility out in, in outside of Vegas. It's like about 45 minutes outside of Vegas in the mountains called Spring Mountain. Right. And I got sent up, up up there for about, I did about seven months there. Mm, so I did wow. a total of about 10 months. In prison? Yeah. In, in juvie. Oh, juvie. Oh, juvie. Yeah, juvie. Yeah, yeah. yeah, because in, in, in juvie, it's, they jurisdict you. That's what they call you. They, they jurisdict you. They don't, you're not convicted. So even if you do a felony charge, you right. know, and, and, um, and if it, even though it's a felony, but if it doesn't construe as for you to be tried as an adult, right. if you stay in the juvenile system, they call it, they jurisdict you. And so, because the goal is to try to reform you, mm, okay. to try to like, you know, save you basically, like, you know, from, um, you know, right. they don't want to put that, that jacket on you that, oh, you're a felon okay. now. So then you go, you do that 10 months and then do from 10 there, months. Yeah. what happens next? So from there, man, 10 months, because I was locked up with homies, Oh yeah, yeah. you know? So, I mean, we were putting it down in there, you know I mean? We were, we were, we were cool, you know, we did what we had to do. We understood the program. You know, but we stayed clean. You know, we used that time to get right. in shape. <laughs> you know, so it was we, like school for you. Yeah, and like... that's where I got my GED. Oh mm. wow! Yeah, that's crazy. So, so you so, had nowhere to go. Yeah, man. So you know what? Like, so it, and it's so crazy. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's so cool and it's crazy at the same time. But it's so awesome how God always works things out. Right. You know, because the truth is, man, that I had no interest in finishing high school. Mm. But what's crazy is that my caseworker, because we're all assigned caseworkers um, there that they kind of work with us. He, the way he presented it was funny. He's like, George, man, because what happened is that when you go in there, all the homies will tell you, they'll be like, Hey, when you take the assessment test, just act dumb. So they give you the easiest classes. Mm. <laughs> so we're like, okay, all right, all right. So that's exactly what I did, man. So I like, I did all the answers wrong. You know what I mean? And so they put me in the easiest classes. Right. And so one of the teachers and thank God for that teacher, man. Thank God for people like that. Sometimes God will put people in your life that you don't even know why, but they're there for a reason. And this teacher, man, you could see him and you'd be like, this guy doesn't care. But it was crazy because when I gave him my work, he's like, come here. I'm like, what's up? He's like, what are you doing? I said, what do you mean? What am I doing? Like, I just gave you my work. Like, is something wrong? He's like, man, you know you're smart. Hmm. So this is kind of like outside your family, and this is actually like a professional right. giving you word for affirmation. Yeah, and you've been wanting that for like in jail, in juvie, juvie. I mean, in yeah. juvie, in juvie, man. Not jail yet, not jail yet. Okay, wow. <laughs> Look at this. Okay, go for it. Yeah, man. So he's so he's looking at me. He's like, George, you're smart, man. And I'm like, you know, I just kind of smile, grin. He's like, I know why you guys do what you do. Like, I know I'm not dumb. 
He's like, but you have a chance. He's like, he's like, you know what? I'm going to talk to your caseworker and we could probably put you in some GD classes. How would you like that? And I said, well, I don't know. I didn't really, I was like, whatever, yeah. you know? So then my caseworker comes and same thing. He comes, he's like, Hey George, like, you know, your teacher, he recommended this. I agree with him. You are very sharp. You're very smart. You do everything that you have to do here. You have a good attitude, you know? He's like, look, and the way he painted it, though, that's what convinced me. Right. He's like, look, George, let's be honest. What's the number one reason why people get violated on probation? And I was like, I don't know. He's like, because they ditch and they don't go to school. Mm. And I'm like, huh, that's true. That's true. He's like, so I have a solution. Let's get your GED. You're done with high school. Right. And when you get out, if you don't have to be forced to go to school or you get a job. And I was like, I like that. Right. Okay. Right. So he so painted it in a way where he's like, so what do you think? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And yeah, man. And, and that teacher and my caseworker, they set me up with the classes. And uh, like a month before, a month before I was released, I took, I went to go take the GED class, uh, the GED test, right. and I passed. Wow. And so I actually graduated um, on my 17th birthday. No way. Like a little bit before my 17th in birthday. Wow, in juvie. Cool. Okay, so then you get out, and then what happens after that? So, you know, you you stick with that mentality, man. That's the that's what's kind of sad is that even though you're in there, but you stick with that mentality. And even though, like, I had the opportunity that I had, you know, I still had that gangster mentality. You know, so as soon as I get out, you know, I report myself to my probation officer. And I stay straight for a little bit. You know, right. I, I get... I start, you know, I get assigned to some college classes and things like that. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm going to start trying to work and things like that. But that doesn't last, man, because the first thing that I do is, like, I go look for my homies. Right. Wow. I go look for them. and you're look, you're, That's your community. That's, that's where you, you go back That's to what I know. Community. Yeah. Right. That's wow. what I know, man. So, by, so let's go into... The, okay, so now you get to your 20s. What's the turning point? Yeah, so... So the turning point was actually at 18 years old. Right. And at 18 years old, that's when, um, that's when uh, I finally came into uh, our recovery home. You know, here at the, the church that I go to here, we have, um, we have men's recovery homes. And for a long time, I mean, I knew about God. Right. Okay. Now, question. Yeah. That recovery home, was that in Las Vegas? No, no. So it was, uh, I had to, that's when I finally made the move here to San Bernardino. Oh, so, who, so how, yeah, did you, who connected? how did you get connected to that? Yeah, so I I had a uncle right. who was in the home here in San Bernardino. Oh, right. and so he would him and my uncle, his dad, they would always you know because we knew each other growing up, right. and we knew like you know he was into drugs, right. I was into drugs, and so he was in here and um, you know and he he was having a lot of success in here you know like as far as beating the habit. You know, mm. beating the drugs. And so they would tell me about it and I would be like, ah, for a long time. Right. You know, I would shy it off. But it wasn't until one day, I remember, I think it was after Thanksgiving. It was after Thanksgiving, that same year that I came in. I was 18 years old already. It was Thanksgiving. I think I came to California and that's when he talked to me. You know, he told me, he's like, hey, man, you should really come. You know, right. it's a good program. Like, you know, if you really you really want to change. And right. that's what caught me. I'm like, yeah, I do want to change. Like, I really do want to change. I'm really tired of this, you know? Right. So there came a point that you were just fed up. I was tired, bro. Yeah. yeah. Or like, were you were you tired mentally, emotionally? What, like, what did that mean? Man, everything. Everything. Because, bro, like, in a matter of month, prior to that Thanksgiving, I'm not even kidding you. In a, in a matter of a month, I was arrested and booked in the county jail three times, bro. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're right. I think I yeah. think, I think it's ready. <laughs> it was ready. It was ready. Yeah. So, yeah. I, man, I was like, I was like, man, because I would be in the county jail, man. I'm like, man, is this really going to be my life for the rest of my life? Mm. And I was like, man, dude, like, what am I doing with my life? And I remember, you know, him telling me, like, you know, if you really want to change. And I was like, yes, I do, man. I want to change. Right. But I remember telling him, I'm like, look, Vic, I'm like, what I'm going to do, man, is I'm going to go back home. And I'm going to, I think I can, I can stop doing this. I think I can, man. I'm going to just start and I'm going to change. Right. And then, um, and so, yeah, I left Cali, went back to Vegas, 
the next day, I was I was like, you know what? I'm not going to touch any drugs. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not. I'm just going to chill at the house. I'm going to chill. Right. Mm. And I and that lasted for a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Because I started to like have those withdrawals and I started to like, I was coming down. And you didn't have no sense of help, right? Like a leader or anybody that you could go to. At that time, no. For help, right? So you went back basically to your old ways, old like a nest, right? Where your ways were. Well, I was already in my ways. Right. Right. Yeah, I was I was already in my ways. Like nothing. Like I said, my you know my I I had just come to visit my family. Right, right. You know what I mean. So like I was still immersed in that lifestyle. Right. You know, so I was I was still active. I was still gang banging. I was still doing drugs. Right. You went when you went back to Vegas. You went with a sense of you wanted to change already, though, right? Yeah, I right. went back with that sense. Like, okay, I'm gonna do this, but I can do it alone. Uh, alone. That's the problem. Okay. Yeah. Do you find that it was like that was the first mistake? Big time. So you had to withdraw, right? Yeah, man. Okay, I so was coming what down. What happened after that? What did you realize? Yeah, so like that's when when I was doing that. I remember I picked up the cell. I had a cell phone at that time. Right. I picked up the cell phone. I called up the homie and I'm like, "Hey, what are you doing?" He's like, "Hey, I'm over here. Come through." I'm like, "Hey, do you have some, you know, some stuff?" You yeah. know, he's like, he's like, "Yeah, yeah." I was like, "Yeah, I got like 20, 40 bucks on it too, if you want." He's like, "Yeah, come through." And then so when I hung up the phone, that's when it hit me. Wow. It hit me, yeah. and I'm like. George, you're addicted. Mm. Wow. You know, because at that point I had sold it, you know, I would use it. You know, right. I was, you know, it was it was part of the 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 party scene. Right. You know, it was part of like, you know, being with the homies. Right. You know, it was part of it, you know, and I'm yeah. pretty sure a lot of people out there can relate, you know, like right. those that are listening, you know, can relate. Like it's like you know, you you do something so long that it just becomes part of you, but you yeah, never the norm. It's yeah, like normal. It's normal, and you never really. Oh, I'm addicted to this. Right. You know, you never really say that. You know, right. and but that's a good thing, right? You, so when you said that, you caught on. Was it a sense of like, kind of not like asking for help, or a sense of like feeling empty when you said that? Like, oh, yeah. oh I'm addicted. Helpless. 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 Helpless, man. I think that was like, and I was like, man, because I used to be the one that would preach, like, you know. You do the drugs, don't let the drugs do you, mm, you know, okay. and I would be that that I would be that homie that like, man, like, you know, I would right. I would, you know, get on my on my on my friends and stuff, be like, man, what are you doing? You're acting dumb. Like, you know, like I and the, here I am, you know, I can't even go a few hours after I wake up wow. without it. So mm. then from there, how did you get so how did you get to San Bernardino? Yeah, so from there, like that's when I finally said, you know what, after, you know, Oh, so here's what's funny. <laughs> I almost forgot this. So that same day, that same day, fresh back from Cali, from ha- being with family, I call up the homie. We go and we do what we have to do. We end up going to another friend's house, uh, his apartment. Right. And it was really close by my house. And so we went to the store. We went to the store. All we did was go to the store to buy some some things, like cigarettes, things like that. On the way back, we're passing by a Pollo Loco. Uh-huh. Right. And there's a police patrol car at that Pollo Loco, but okay. they're inside. And they're eating. Right. They come running out. We're, what? Yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're, yeah we're, 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 me and my homie were passing by. He's, he's, and, and he's still like a good friend to this day. And um, we're passing by, minding our own business. You right. know, we're not committing crimes. Right. <laughs> we're not, we're, we're really just trying to have a good day that day. We're just trying to get to the friend's pad. And just chill for the rest of the night. Right. These cops come busting out the door. And they're like, hey, you two, come over here. And we're like, what? That's like, that, And you know what? We didn't have anything to hide. At right. least we felt like we didn't have anything to Jeez. hide. And so we didn't run. Right. We're like, we could have easily ran. But we said, nah, for what? You know, we're going to have a chill night. So we we approached the officer. We're like, What's, what seems to be the problem? They're like, well, what are you guys doing? We're like, well, we're on, we just came from the store. We're on our way to, to, uh, to a friend's house. He lives right here in these apartments. Right. Well, what do you have in your hand? I'm like, man, it's just a grocery bag with the items that we bought. And they're like, well, can we can we search you guys? You know, and at that time, we didn't know our rights and stuff. Right. And as a matter of fact, like, during that time, man, um, you know, it was if you look like a gang member, that was probable cause. Okay. Mm. That was probable cause enough for them to pull you over and search you. You know right. what I mean? And if not, they could, if you didn't want to cooperate, they could always call gang unit. And then gang unit, they had the right, you know, wow, to like, okay. they, they would bring the rap sheet on you and everything. Wow. And so... So we're like, ah, we're, we cooperated. Right. And they're, you know, they're searching us. They look at the bag. They didn't find anything. They get my friend. He didn't have anything. Boom. They pull out a, a, a pocket knife from me. And it was right. like, it was, it was pretty big. 
But and they're like, "What are you doing with this?" And they're like, "I thought you didn't have anything on you." And I'm like, "Well, I don't. It's just a, it's just pocket a pocket knife." knife. Right. And they're like, "Yeah, but." And they pull it, they open it. Oh yeah, this is more than six inches. I'm oh, like, I'm like, no. I had ne- before this, right. I had never argued with cops. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, "Yo, man, I committed the crime. Take I me." It. I, I did it. I'm not gonna argue with you and fight and you know. But at that point, I was like, "You're kidding me, right?" And they're like. They're like, nope, this is considered a misdemeanor here in, in Las Vegas. I'm like, it's double-edged and it's more than six inches. It's a, it's a pocket knife, man. I was just using it to right. do something earlier and I forgot I had it in my pocket. He's like, well, it's a misdemeanor. Wow. And, and, then we had some, and then we had some drawings there. Like I had a piece of paper there with drawings, like right. with, you know, just drawings of the, like tagging and the neighborhood and stuff like that. And they're like, yeah, and we're going to keep this as evidence, too. I'm like, you're kidding me, oh, man. man. I'm like, man, come on. Let me go. I'm like, we were just going to my friend's house right here, man. You're really going to arrest me? So that was the fourth arrest wow. in a matter of a month, bro. Wow. wow. That's crazy. And I think at that point, at that point, guys, I said, okay, God, you have my attention. Right. Really? Yeah. Just like that, huh? Because the thing is that God kept trying to get my attention, you know, through people, through my uncle, through coming to the home, through different things. And I just wouldn't listen. Right. Trying to do it alone. Trying to do it alone. And so I finally said, okay, God, you have my attention. And Mm -hmm. I said, you know what? Like I said, you know what? If, 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 just like, I know a lot of people can relate to this, but I was like, you know what? If you get me out of this and you know what? Okay. I got to make that decision. I'm going to go to San Bernardino. Right. So that's basically what made you seek the Lord. Yeah, that's After what that, really made right. me like, like really kind of surrender. Point. Right. You know, like I hasn't fully surrendered yet. Yeah. But I was at that you point. Were I, stepping. Yeah. Stepping yeah. So then from that point, I um I said, you know what? Two days later, I think they got me out. I got out like OR. It's called like conditional release or something like that. Right. And they get, get, give you a future court date. I get out. And this is what's crazy. I get out and I'm still stubborn. Mm. I'm still like, who can I call? Right, wow. right. But you know what happened from there is that all the doors to the, my so-called friends started to close. Really? Yeah. They started to accuse me of things. They started to, you know, say lies about me. You know, they started to. It, it became real ugly. That's how it got. It's, so, in other words, your 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 social circle is now flipping. My world. My world was spinning. And now and you're coming, down. it's almost sounds like you're coming to your worst nightmare. Yeah. Because you're now now you're truly alone. And now you're right. not yeah. accepted. And now not only are now not accepted, now you're being looked at as like not even a bad guy, but you're just like somebody who doesn't like an enemy. Yeah. Enemy. You're now an enemy. Yeah, an enemy. And in right. that world, that's one of the worst things that you could be looked at. Right. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Any, and so, anywhere you go. Yeah. Was it did it catch you off guard? Was there a reason oh, why? Was there a reason why there Yeah, there were some reasons, right. you know what I mean? But you know, you know, it was it was just it was petty stuff. Petty you know, stuff, it was real yeah. petty stuff that right. you know what, but it was like whatever they were thinking, it's like what you couldn't do anything about it. You know right. what I mean? And so but I took it. And that's where I knew. I'm like, you know what? Okay, God, now you really have my attention. Right. And that's when I said, you know what? I got it. I have to do this. So my dad, my parents, my family at that time, there was a wedding in Oxnard. Okay. okay. That was going to take place on a Saturday. And so my dad was like, look, you really want to do this? And I said, yeah. I said, yeah, I'm ready. You know? And I think that was like the first honest conversation that I had with my dad. Wow. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. I remember we we're in the kitchen table and, and, um, you know, and I started to open up about a lot of things that I had done. You know, with, and I, yeah. with your dad, and, and no, in my life. Oh, okay. You know, and he was shocked. You know, and I was telling him, Dad, like you, you, you have no idea who I am. Right. You know, you have no idea who I've become, and I'm not blaming anyone, but this is what I've done. This is who I am. This is what I have become, and and I want to change. That's crazy. Was he accept? Was he accepted? He was oh, shocked, man. You know, I think, you know, as a, I think as just like any parent, man. It just stunned him. The, it stunned the, him, the, yeah. the stunning and then just the disappointment. Yeah. You know, like, and, and I get it, man, because again, I can't blame anyone for the decisions I made. Right. You know, there's things in our lives that shape us and I get it. But at the end, we all make a choice. Yeah. Right. You know, and my choices led me down a real dark, ugly road road man and i was alone and at that time i 
I just, it's not even that I was seeking my dad. I just, I needed to just say something. Right. Yeah. Because everything that I had done, everything that I was doing was just eating me up inside. Mm. Wow. So, so you get dropped off in San Bernardino. I get dropped you off. This, you go to this thing. What was that experience like? Being oh, in, in man. A, in it was. Home? Yeah. So being in there, man, it was a, it was crazy. Cause I, my thing was like, man, I'm going to go lock myself up. <laughs> yeah. That was my thing, right. you know. What I mean, I'm, 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 I was institutionalized, man. I did a total, like from the age of 16 to 18, I did a total of almost two years in juvenile. Yeah, that's a long you time. You know, because I got, you know, I was, you know, I had gone back after Spring Mountain. I violated my probation. I went back and I did like another nine, ten months. Mm-hmm. So my whole experience from 16 to 18 was being an institution. I'm like, man, what am I doing? Yeah, like. How am I going to voluntarily go get myself so that I can be locked up with some strangers? Right. But man, I, um, it, was, I was, it, was, it was a total different experience than what I expected. Because when I walked in, right. I walked into a house. So it was like a normal house. I'm like, oh, okay. I was thinking like it was going to be like a hospital. You know what I mean? Like I, I was thinking. <laughs> right. But it wasn't. It was just. And then the guys that came to receive me, they looked like me. Mm. I was like, oh. He's got tattoos, you know, like he looks, hey, you know what I mean? Like I was like, this is different. This is weird. Right. So right away, it kind of like, okay, it kind of opened me up. Okay. And man, but after that, it was just, I can honestly say the best experience of my life, man. Wow. Right. Because that's where I truly was able to know and fall in love with, with Jesus, man. Okay. Right. So where was that? Okay, so you, that's, that's, that's an interesting, how did, what was your, your moment that you were like, okay, Jesus is real, Jesus, I accept, like this whole idea of just, how, did you feel like that, how did you, how did you arrive that, to that place? In the county jail. That happened in the county jail. Oh, okay. Yeah, so when I realized, and then like, you know, being, when I got released, I was like, right. man. God keeps showing himself over and over again. So I said, you know what? God's real. Okay. Right. So now it was just a matter of the home taught me, though, like his love. Okay. Mm-hmm. So because I didn't understand a lot of things about God. Okay. I was, right. I was new to this, you know, but man, when as soon as I came in, man, like, you know what? Like, you know, God just started to work in my life. He started to really work in my heart. And that's when I started to really experience him in a whole different way where I started to really experience his love, his right. mercy, because I because man, it was like being in there the first uh like I want to say the first month. Right. It was like um it was like a journey where while I was there, God just kept showing me situation after situation how he was always there. Wow. Mm. And and that would break me, man. It uh, would break me because I'd be like, "Man, God, like I'm so sorry that I ignored you for so long." Right. So, like, that's so interesting. Like, did you, being in the home, like, did you come to, like, a realization of, like, man, I love God, God loves me, but now I need to love myself? Is that what it was? Yeah. And in and, and the beginning, yeah. But it kind of, see, and that's where, like, like I feel like the journey never ends. Right. Because at that time, yeah, like, I did start to value myself more. Okay. I did. Like, I did start to realize that there's a lot more to life. And I started to realize that, you know what, um, you know, I do have a purpose. Mm -hmm. What that purpose is, I didn't know, but I started to really feel like, you know what? This is where I belong. Mm, Right. Okay. This is where I belong. So where did you go from there? Did you like, how long did you, how long were you in there for? So I did about 11 months to a year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then from there, how do you, what was the transition from there? So from there, the transition from there, like I, 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 um, we have some. We have what's called like reentry. Okay. Right? So the reentry phase, and um, so it's available. It's a lot. Not everyone does it because some people do go back to their families, things like that. But one thing that I accepted when I was in there, I said, you know what, I can't go back to Vegas. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's important. I don't know when. Right. But I, I, I felt peace that you know what, um, this is where God wants me now, and so right. I said, you know what, I, I, I I'm not gonna go back to Vegas and move. The other thing that I had come to terms with is that, like, you know what? I'm not going to move with my family because I have family here in California, too. Right. But I said, I'm not going to move with them because, you know what? I want to really, I really want to f- 
stay on this path. And there was a certain, like a good fear in me. There was mm-hmm. a good fear in me that, you know what, like I didn't want to go back. Right. I didn't want to go back to my old ways. So I did any everything that I could to protect that. Yeah. Right. And so I went to reentry phase. And then we also have, uh, there's a like an urban training center. Oh, okay. Kind of like what you were in, like the... What is it? The uh, uh, YWAM? Yeah. Okay. So it's kind of like that, okay. you know? It's, and so I went there for six months and then, you know, I came back, you know, I lived with uh, different families in the church. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, so you, 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 you put yourself in where you wanted to change. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, cause we see that a lot, right? And a lot of people go to the home and, and at the end of the day, there is the love, there is the, the, the Jesus is there for you, but you got to do it yourself, right? You have yeah. to kind of try and just stick within that path. Yeah. Well, it was interesting what you're saying, though, too, because like I think there's like a stigma, right, about homes. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's a stigma, but like, isn't mental health has a stigma as well? Isn't there like, isn't there some stuff like we're like, oh, okay, we took pop a pill. Oh, right. Okay. Well, like you know, and it's like, and I think there needs to be in today's society, there needs to be more programs, right, that can provide a personal, intimate. Um, curriculum, community yeah. that will allow there to be a time to have a safe space where we can recover, right. uh, re- recollect, and even discover and rediscover. Right. And yeah. it almost sounds like that's more needed more than ever. Yeah. You know, and then like when you put Jesus in the equation, I think there's so much power in that. Right. You right. know, so it's like I, I'm all for that, you know. So, Moving forward in this in this aspect, and it's, this sounds like an incredible time, but like I, I'm more interested in the aftermath of your program. What was what was George looking like after like away from all this? What what yeah. who? <laughs> I don't know what the heck. Yeah, man. So I, you know, I really, you know, and I'm still, I, I still love Jesus. <laughs> yeah. But I became, I I immersed myself completely. You know, like 100%, I gave myself over, you know, to everything, to the church, to right. ministry. Okay. Um, you know, I gave myself to what it looks like to be in ministry. And what you have to do to be in ministry. And right? what you have to do. Like, I was, I did everything. Right. So, all right. Can I be real? Yeah. We, oftentimes when we transition and transition ins and outs and new phases of life, um, there's a type of behavior and mistakes that we do, right? Yeah. So you came from a place of drugs, um, getting locked up, criminal, gang violence, and now you're like coming out of the home. What's your new trouble? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. do, you do trouble different now. Did that? Does your trouble look different now? Like. Does your destruction look different? Because we're yeah. all destructive, oh, right, right. right? So I think my biggest thing, because there was a time where no, there was a time where I really can I can say like I I I was you I, walked the line. I walked the line, right? But I think that's what my problem was that I was so afraid to expose my own mistakes. Oh, so you mm. went from one extreme to another, exactly. Right. Holy shit, different way. Yeah, man, and that's so. And I and and I'm not. And it, again, it's not. In a bad way, like, you know, like that to say, yeah, you know, you walk the line, you know. But the thing is that when you have a mix, a mixture of the way you grow up and you and you 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 kind of mask the problem, you know, and not to say that Jesus wasn't working deep inside of me. Right. But the fact is that now now that I was performing, it became a performance walk Mm. instead of a relational walk. Right. Because. Because the thing is that all my relationships in my life would give up on me. Mm-hmm. Because the all like from 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 uh, since I was a child up until when you know what I mean. And I'm not saying that they abandoned me, but a lot. So, even though some some relationships did abandon me, you know what I mean. Like not everyone so much abandoned me, but they but in a sense they gave up on me mm-hmm. because right. because my behavior and which makes sense. You know I get it. You know what I mean. Like you can only withstand so much. Right. So I think that I brought that mentality in with God. Mm, okay. I get you. Yeah. Right. Now, with that mentality and, geez, like you went from one extreme 
Did you have any relationship with any, like, there was there, you know, I know you're married yeah. now, but like, what was relationships look like? You know, where were you at in that area? Yeah, man. So, I mean, I can't really say that I was building friendships, you know, because everything was just, you know, based off of church and ministry. Right. You know, it really was just based off of that. Like, were, I, it wasn't all about like just accomplishing, finish, like, you know, and perform, like the way you said it, perfor- performance, but was it, was that for the ego? I think so. I can, I, I think now as I look back, I can say that a lot of it, yeah, because, and then, and, and there's like, I think there's different egos. Like, right. I, I believe that there's egos that, you know, are that prideful ego, and then there's egos that, hey, you're doing good. Like dignity. Mm. Yeah, like that. Okay, you know, and I think that that's what it was doing to me is that I was because I was, you know, I was, I was tasting for the first time in my life. I was tasting, uh, as you can say, like in the in the church realm in ministry, I was tasting success. Mm. Right. You know what I mean? Like God was raising me up. You know what I mean? Like I was, I was, um, I was over the youth ministry. Um, you know what okay. I mean? Um, we were having, you know. We were little by little, we we're tasting success, right. you know, um, within the church. You know what I mean? I was becoming influential. Okay. So then from that point, did you have any like turns? So, like, did, did, was there any um, other challenges that kind of, did you ever find yourself in a dark moment again? No, no, just not really. But it was just more like, you know, now I was up against the, the neck, my next challenge, which was like, now I was starting to feel kind of lonely. Okay. Right. And what did you do with that loneliness? <laughs> Just like, you know, what I knew how to do, you know, which was, you know, um, okay, well, you know, relationship. Right. Okay. And did yeah. you, did you meet somebody? Yeah. So, so I met someone, you know, I met someone, you know, in the, in the, in the course of doing ministry. And again, you know, and I think that my choice, even my choice, you know, when I decided right. to like, man, you know what? I think it's time for a relationship. I think that I went based off of what is going to make me look good. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you went in for that, for like a, it was almost like a selfish reason. Right. In a, in a way, in a way, in a way, like I, because again, you, you, you get created and you create, you buy into that image of what, church life and what ministry should look like. Right. This is, you're you're unpacking something. You you could even get lost in that. Right. And you can. You won't notice it, you get lost in that. You can get lost. Because he's unpacking something that there's like a, uh, there's like props. He's like, there's like, there's a possibility. And there's a, this is big in church culture. Right. And like, even like social media culture, like you create props that are not even real. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's like, you're creating a setting of life. And like, like, so you, you purposely include this person and you say that you're in a relationship, but it's not like inwardly, it's not real. Right. Yeah. You know, and I don't know if that's for you, but like, but yeah. you get what I'm saying? Like, no, there, does, there's it, a lot yeah, of that. It so does, it was she part sense. of the leader? Like, was she in the leadership? Yeah. So she, yeah. So she was involved in ministry and, um, and this person, I want to say this off the back because I'm not going to say any names, you know, just for the sake, but it was something this person was and is right. amazing. Okay. Right. You know, and um, and she's actually the mother of my first daughter. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, and um, I would never, you know, bash or talk bad. But the reason why I bring this out is because I know that, I know that this is going to, I know there's someone that is going to maybe relate to this. Okay. And now, are you still married to her? You got married? No. Or? Yeah, so we ended up getting married. Okay, you got Yeah, married. we ended up getting married, you know, because kind of going back, you know, I I really thought this was this was the right person that's going to fit. But that people for me. Did people give their opinions and pressured you in a way where you had added on to that? Yes and no. I do. Yes and no. I think it was more that, you know, I, I think it was more what I created for myself. Okay. okay. You know, because I said, you know what, like, because it, and it was, it was something that was spoke, spoken to you. Right. But, you know, I think with good intentions, because it's just like any mom or dad. Right. Any mom or dad is going to say, hey, son, you know, marry the right woman. Right. You know, it's like Proverbs 31, you right. know, like nobody, a lot of people don't know this, but Proverbs 31 was actually written from a mom to a son. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Did, you, did yeah. you know that? Like a lot of women say, oh, I'm, I'm Proverbs 31 woman. Yeah. But in reality, that was written for a mom 
to, to her son. Mm-hmm. Right. So, of course, a mom is going to set high expectations. Yeah. Right. You know, so I had high expectations, but I had expectations that were just for, for ministry. Mm. You know, and I looked at this person and I said, yeah, you know what? Like, regardless of whatever else I'm feeling, I'm just going to zone in on this. And there were a lot of signs, man. A lot of signs, a lot of a lot of things, and signs as in how signs as like, in like good. you know what, like no, not good, like that. You know what, like you know, George, is this really what you want to do? You right. know, and and because I believe this, I believe that you know, I I don't know everyone's story, and I'm not trying to say that if they ever say this, that's wrong. Right. But sometimes a lot of people will say like, oh yeah, you know, God told me to marry this person, mm. and I don't believe that. I don't Love be- the choice, I, or even it? other people tell you. Other there's a lot. Of, yeah, there's a lot of hey, people. Yeah. I, I think you should marry her. God, yeah. spoke, God spoke to me, right? And that's and, da- like, and that's dangerous, right? It is. That's I, dangerous. I, 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 I mean, I want to be sensitive to our our audience. To our audience. You yeah, do yeah. get married, and you know this yeah. whole thing. But like, I, I think like love is a choice, right? right. Yeah, and, and love is. Love is who, where you put your energy, all that to together, right? And so right. I think that's really interesting because, uh, you know, we, sometimes we kind of forge God's signature. Right. You know, yeah, we say we, like, hey, uh, God's hands right yeah, here. Yeah. And, we, this is, and God told me in, we in look the name at, of. We look you know, at. I'll help you. <laughs> we, the name yeah, of, we, I'll help you sign. Yeah. So, we, okay. So then you get married yeah. to this girl. And how, what, how long were you married for? So, so yeah. So we get married <laughs> and then... um. We were married for a total of like, um, I mean, it was like from 2008 to about 2000, end of 2011, 12. Okay. Three, four yeah, years. So three, four years. Right. And um, and like I said, man, I don't have anything bad to say about her, you know? Mm. She's the mother of my daughter and, um, you know, I will always have care and concern. What, can I ask what, 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 what happened? So, why did it why did it end up in di- divorce? Yeah. Yeah, why? so and and it was it was my choice. Okay. You know, it really was, you know, and and it's just, you know that I never I never listened. And I'm not saying that I hope I can kind of say this in a in a way that's understandable, but I never there was never truly genuine love there. Okay. You know, and and I'll be honest, you know, like it, it was my part, you know, where I felt out of love and I felt in love, you know, and um, and I know that that's not the best way to do things, right. you know, but the reason why I'm honest is because, you know what, it's it's a story that I can't, I'm not going to be able to run from, right? you know, but it was something that, that I did do and it's something that I, that did happen and it's something that. I punished myself for so long. Wow. Kept it in you, huh? I punished myself for yeah. so long. Man. Yo, did you ever feel like embarrassed? Where did that, you know, like, like how did that affect you? Yeah, man. And it, I'm sure it had a lot of effects on her. Yeah, and yeah. It, and then one more thing that you mentioned in Proverbs 31. I, you know, I think men should also read Proverbs 31 for themselves as well mm-hmm. and set the bar for themselves as well. Right, because right. we always try to set the bar for women. Yeah, and you know, like, hey, you got to You got to look for the. You got to look for the right one, mijo. You got to look for the right one. But right. like, what about you, bro? Like, right. yeah. and I think like, the story is an evidence that we need to be focusing yeah. on ourselves. Right. And see, and that's why, and that's why, like, I kind of going back a little bit. That's why, like, when you say, were there ever any major issues that kind of came about? And there weren't until I started dating. You know, mm-hmm. I was walking a straight line, but then when I started dating, and that's kind of like what happened. And I'm not saying I'm not blaming this. But we did started to do things that we shouldn't have done. Okay, so so that started to awaken inside of me, you know, because I always I always used to struggle with lust. Okay, you know, but when I came to Christ, like I did, I I did, um, I kind of just I crushed that craving, you know, because right. I I you know I wasn't going after women. I was you know try, I was trying to be careful, you know, and Your trying focus. to carry myself pure. Right, you know, um, I never crossed the line, you know. I always try to do, but. Once I started dating, you know, we started to cross lines that we shouldn't have. And then I think that that also influenced. And that's why, like, I, I want to share this because I believe that sometimes sometimes we make mistakes and we think that we have to, those mistakes have to define our next decisions. Right. Because okay. the thing is that I, I had made all these, you know, th- these, these, these choices. So I felt like, well, you know what, like, you know, instead of doing, instead of, you know, just, you know, walking away from this relationship, you know, I should at least, 
you know, be a man and honor it. Mm. And that's, you know, and I can't emphasize this enough that that's, that's not always the right choice. Right. Right. It's sometimes, sometimes these things don't happen, even no matter how much effort you put in. Yeah. And so unfortunately did the results and the outcome came divorce. Are you right. guys civil today? We are. Okay. We are. We're, we're, we're very civil, thankfully, man. And, and, you know, we, we, we share custody with my, my oldest daughter. I love how her. Is, how is your relationship with your oldest? Um, it's great. It's good. Like with her, it's, it's good, you know, and, and, and we just try to embrace her. Right. I try to love her and, and, and treat her the same as, 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 cause I have two other boys, you know, so I try to treat them equal. I try to treat them the same. And, um, she's a daddy's girl. Yeah. 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 But she's also a mommy's girl too. Okay. You know, so she, so I know it's hard for her, you right. know, but we try to make the best of it, you know, and that's why I say, man, that, you know, I'm, you know, it, it just, you know, I got, I really, I always say this, God really gave me a grace card. Mm. You know, he really did because I wouldn't encourage something like that for anyone. Right. You right. know what I mean? I, I really wouldn't. And, and I know people might say, well, yeah, but you did it. Yeah. But it was so hard, man. Yeah. All yeah. relationships are not created equal. Right. Right. Yeah. It's like, they're all, they're, it's all different. And it's just, you know, I'm sure you had to get all the counseling and you have to really, Really kind of just withdraw a lot, right? Yeah, man. I pun like I said, I punish myself for so long, man. And that's where all a lot of old emotions, not behaviors, but a lot of mm. old emotions and some behaviors started to come up mm. from my past, from my childhood. And I believe that was the that was the, the that was one of the biggest turning points God showing me, you see, you had success, but you never really let me deal with you. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's interesting. Um, I think what I'm hearing from your story is really consistent. It's really, you're looking for such an intimacy, yeah. from an intimate love, right? right? Right. And I think most of the time, lust is a sign of lack of intimacy. Mm. And so, 100%. I am a I I I could be wrong on everything, but I truly believe that men need to learn how to have friends with girls and learn yeah. how to treat girls as friends. Right, and, right. And it, it start young because sometimes some guys don't know how to talk to girls, and the way they talk to girls is all about pickup lines. Yeah, right. or it's all about like impress. Right. Um, and you don't if you learn how to disable that and turn that mode off. And just start looking for that person as a human being yeah. rather mm. than an object right. or a price to win or a trophy. Right. Then maybe you can just start learning how to be intimate with yourself. Yeah. Intimacy is super honest with yourself. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you can't and I did not have that. if somebody's not giving it to you. Yeah. Right. And I and that and I like that so much because all I knew was was from my childhood, you know, how you know, and then growing up, you know, as a teenager, that's all I knew intimacy. Yeah, you right. know every every girlfriend I ever had and everything. It was always just about. It's just you know it's just kind of like you lust, know, date, lust. lust. It, was all, it was just yeah, dating, yeah. lust. You know what I mean? Okay, so they, you on. you go from like punishing and you go through this this. I'm sure that this is a trend. You went through a trench. Oh, yeah, man. Like, you're, like, in the valley of death at this point. Yeah. Like, things, your emotions are, are, are just moving around. It's like yeah. a, a bad stomach ache, right? Yeah. Right. So, how do you, so what, is there, like, a light? <laughs> like, you say you have boys. <laughs> oh, what did that man. mean? Yeah, Who's, so. Who provided uh, the boys? Right. You know? Yeah, man. So, no, yeah, man. So, then, from there, you know, like, you know, I, I, I entered my, my relationship, you know, with, with my wife now. Right. You know, and then, um, you know, and. We dated and we were together for, I want to say, for about two years. And, man, you know what? The thing is, dude, like, I used to think, like, at first I was like, you know what? This is this is it. Right. But you know what happened was that, man, like, after my divorce, like, a lot of, like I said, a lot of things happened within me to the point where I was like, man, I don't even want to get married. Mm. I just want to live with this person, you know, and, you know, if we if we create a family together, cool. If not, cool. But... Marriage is out the picture. You're scared. Because of your past I was, yeah, because, yeah, because even though it was my choice and even though like I knew why I had done it, but it's still the 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 still the consequences of it are still real. Right. Yeah, it's scary. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it's scary. Yeah, man. and because you because you you said it earlier before, it was just like your friends see you as an enemy. Uh, there's a possibility walking in with this woman that you wanna and you get married 
And now you've already been viewed as the enemy yeah. a few times. And now right. your previous marriage, she yeah. saw you as an enemy. Yeah. Right. And you're and even and, practically and, the church too. So yeah, and every yeah, and every yeah, right. yeah, how yeah, could yeah, you, 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 right. you, you lose, walked a straight line and you preached this and, message and you and yeah. you dressed this certain way and the pressure and now all up to this, yeah, yeah, I don't want to get yeah. married right. anymore. Especially, why why go through that again? Especially Hispanic. Yeah. Christian. Yeah, yeah, it's hardcore. Yeah. You, you yeah. get crucified you get pretty crucified good. For years. And that's, <laughs> they know yeah, how to cook that in his right. don't they? They don't forget, man. And then then forget. Yeah, and then, and then, and you know, in, in their rightful way, man, it, it was, they had the right, whatever, you know what I mean? But man, dude, I was, I was completely distressed, man, man. Right. And I was completely torn and, you know, I lost everything. I lost my so-called friends. I lost so-called, um, so-called ministry friends. I, uh, I lost, uh, you know, relationships, um, you know, it was, it was, it, I started from, from, from zero, you know, again. again and, um, right. you know, but the light to kind of answer your question, the light was, you know, my wife now is, was big time part of that, but it was in this journey where, because I, I even stopped wanting to go to church. Okay. Of course. I didn't want to go back to my old lifestyle because now I had a daughter. Okay. Right. You know, and I really believe I, I'm so grateful for my daughter. I love her so much. And 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 I really believe God used her so much to kind of keep me sane mm. because I everything I started to do now was because, man, you know what? I have a daughter. Right. You know, and I was like, you know, I can't act a fool. Right. You know, I can't go back to what I used to do. Like, heck no. You know what I mean? Like, because that was one thing I was sure of, you know, and that was one thing that the God's work did do in me. He did break the addictions. He did break a lot of things like that, the violence, like all that stuff. Right. Like he really did break through that. But now it was dealing with what I was going through. But it was through that time where when I stopped wanting to go to church where, you know, my wife now was like, look, you know, she she always, you know, had faith. And she said, you know what? No, like, you know what? We got to, if we're not going to go there, like, it's okay, but let's go somewhere else. Mm. You know, and I'm so grateful, you know, for that, for that church that we started to go to at that time because... I mean, the messages that were being spoken, you know, they really started to bring a good, healthy conviction in my life. You were right. being healed. I right. was being healed now. Wow. And and I didn't know that at that moment, but yeah, that's exactly what was happening. And so what I started to like get out of these messages was that, George, you knew the God of the ministry. Right. Uh oh. You knew who I was through ministry. Right. Mm. You knew who I was through your performance. You knew who I was throughout the home. You knew who I was throughout all these things. But now you need to know me for who I am because I love you for who you are. Mm. That's straight deep. That's, come on, baby. Powerful. That's good, George. Right. I like that because that's 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 the God of your heart. Exactly. You right. know, and I think that's so cool because, all right, it, it sounds like man. I mean, I I do wanna I do wanna ask you because you know, uh, coming to a point of the end of your present. This is your present now. Right. We're here. We have this podcast. You share this story, and I'm. I think that, <laughs> I think it's so relatable, and there's so much. And I love the fact that we that we all know that there's a lot more of this story, right? <laughs> yeah. But like today, George, you're so different, and you look back and talking. How did this make you feel talking about your story? And how does it yeah. feel to talk about it today, and knowing that people are going to listen to this story? Yeah, man, it it. It makes me happy right. to know that, you know, people are going to hear this real authentic story, you know, because this is, it's my life, you right. know, and it brings, you know, at the same time, man, it, it, um, as I, as I am, as I'm sharing the story, man, it just, it's just crazy how sometimes life happens, whether it be through our choices or sometimes unseen circumstances, Right. You know, there there's things that, you know, I really believe that there's things that happen because we we made choices. Yeah. Right. You know, but then there's things that happen that we just have no control over. Mm. You know, but one of the things that's beautiful about, you know, why I even, you know, dreamt about this podcast was because it was because you know what? Like I was comforted. I finally I came at peace and I think we talked about this in our when we were giving doing our little tester. Right. I came at peace when I was able to accept me for me. Mm. And 
and and it's crazy that that didn't happen until I was like maybe in my 30s. Right. Yeah. You know, because for a long time like I really wanted people to accept me. Yeah. Right. That was the cry of my heart, you know, and 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 a lot of the things that I did, a lot of the trouble that I went to was because of that. You know what I mean? But when I finally was able to come to peace with myself and with God, you know what that, you know, because there always comes a point in our lives where we want to try to hide the ugly. Right. You know? And as much, George, as much as, you know, uh, your testimony, sad, happiness, how, however it went, I believe your testimony is beautiful, man. Like, I believe your testimony is going to reach others that have been through the pain that you've been through, through the confusion, right? Through the sense of hope, yeah. hope helplessness. And I believe that... you. Your your testimony is, is for a reason, man. Like we anything yeah. that we go through is for a reason. Because if we never went through pain, if we've been, never been through nothing, we can never teach somebody else and somebody else and, and we can never teach hope to somebody else. Yeah. Right? And that's why, yeah, man. And, and, I, and, and I I'm honored to, to I want to tell you this uh, this last question. What advice can you give the young safe George that is stepping into the same pathways as you? Oh man. You want I, me to read it again? I'll read it no, again. no, I get it. Yeah, no, 100%, man. I, because I would love to have gone to that young man. Right. You know, Imagine? like, you know, I would love. And what, I would, age, what age would you go to? I would go to him when, 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 at, at 18, 19. I think 19. 19 is when I step, started stepping into ministry more, right. you know, because I went through the home, you know, I turned 19 and then I, that, I really stepped into my journey. And I would just say, hey, I would tell him, man, you're on a great path. Mm. God loves you. God sees you. Right. God has restored you. But you got to know that God loves you regardless. And I would even encourage that young man, be honest. Be real. Right. Don't hide. If you make a mistake, don't hide it. Because that's what gets us in trouble so much. Right. When we try to hide who we are because we are afraid of what people are going to say. Mm, that's good. You know, and because I look back and I think like, man, what if I would have, when I was started to, when I started dating, I look back when, when I first started dating and right. it was, and when it led to my first marriage, I think about that. I said, what if I would have confessed with someone what I was doing? Right with a mentor, with someone that was honest, right. you know, with someone that I could probably come to and, and that wasn't going to judge me. What if I would have come to them and say, hey, man, I'm doing this? Hmm. Like, that relationship probably could have taken a different turn. Right. I, it's so interesting you say this because isn't it what you're doing right now? Confessing? Exactly. Right. And, like, I think we need more confessing more than ever. Yeah. Like everybody is on their phone and everybody has something on their phone. Right. Um, everybody has their lives. Everybody's on their own lane. And confessing is we need to communicate. This needs to come out. Right. And I think that's what op, that's the spirit of Oppie podcast. Yeah. Right. yeah. Because we want to bring people on this podcast and talk about uh the fall, the rise, uh, the success, the defeat. The shame, the embarrassment, right. the hurt, the wounds, the grief, yeah. the loss, the death, the life, and like the most uh, secret thing. And I think we need more of that. Yeah. We need more of our society. And I'm trying to be as transparent with my kids and my wife yeah. and like hearing this story of like, George, I didn't know any of this about you, bro. <laughs> oh, man. And like, this we, is we gnarly. Like, George. Man, this is crazy. Right. Yeah, and man. so it, it is an honor. And I want to say, man, it is an honor to do this episode with you. Big right. time, man. And I am so thankful. Brian, you did a heck of a job, bro. Thanks. Yes, and sir. I'm excited. And this was good. Yeah, man. So look, for all our Offbeat Podcast listeners, man, we thank you so much for tuning in. We thank you so much for uh, being there. And you know what? Share this. Share this with someone. Right. Because again, we shared this from the heart. We had this conversation today. I decided to share my story because, again, I know that there's someone there that can probably relate. Yeah. Mm. I think there's more people that can relate. And I believe that, you know, or even to encourage someone out there, man, to share their story. Because right. you never know who might be listening 
or who might give an ear to what you have to say. And you never know that through that, that person's life can change yeah. or that person's marriage can change right. or those person's kids can change. So don't ever feel that your story is so ugly that you can't share it because yeah. you know what? God is an expert at turning ugliness, ashes into beauty. So thank Amen. you guys so much for listening, man. This is Offbeat Podcast, hey, man. Baby. Share, Have like, subscribe. Day. Let's go, go baby. Woo. Woo.